Welcome back here to TAO Stadium. We're going to get ready. So about four or five minutes away, players will come back on the ground. Look, starting to clear up here as well. But a big uh, celebration going on tonight. We're just waiting for the uh, for it to come onto the ground. But he's uh, having a major milestone tonight with his 500th men's Premier League match across all different things as he's coming on. I'll let you do it, talk about it, Ash. Yeah, we've got uh, Keith Pratt leading his way out onto the TIO main oval here. 500th men's Premier League game and his 1,424th game inside the NTFL is uh, Keith Pratt, well-known goal umpire. And uh, he's actually goal umpiring there with uh, Joanne Wood who is his wife. So family affair, son William also umpires. So uh, he just happens to be umpiring with the men's field umpire games record holder, which is Mark Noonan wearing number 20. And uh, I think that that is an outstanding achievement at a time when the sport is in always in need of umpires. We've had someone that's been able to do 500 men's Premier League games. Outstanding, considering we have an 18-round season up here this year and, of course, finals. So do a couple of games over every, all the weekends and 500 is outstanding. Plus, he's done about 28-plus grand finals as well. So an outstanding career for him in Keith Pratt. Uh, the players are just starting to come out from the ground to, to now. Um, last time these guys met was a 26-point win to the Buffs back in round seven. Um, Pike came back very, very strongly in the third and fourth quarter there. Uh, Buffalo started off with about a 35-point lead at half-time and uh, held on as the Buffs. Uh, Pike did a strong finish. So, Ash, what are you expecting from today's game? Well, I think this might be one of the... I mean, there's a, the Nightcliff Saints game is to come after this, but I've got to say to you, I'm pretty excited about this game. I think Pint, will, Pint has been uh, one of the unluckier sides during the season so far. They've held many sides above them, pretty much most of the sides above them, uh, to account, lost by small margins. You know, they lost to Waratahs by 10. They beat St Mary's in their first win uh, for the season at DXC Arena, and we've seen their second halves consistently been uh, outstanding. I think Buffs have in front of them the opportunity to secure their spot well and truly inside the five. And I'm sure you might be able to run us through where they yep. are in the ladder in a moment. But but they have an opportunity to secure perhaps a spot four in the uh, in that top five. And Pint would consider themselves a smoky to get all the way through with the results that go their way. Yeah, they've got a tough run home, but there's only four rounds here. You're right about Pint. I've seen them about eight or nine times this season in four different three or four different grounds. I looked after their very first game against Nightcliff and they looked really great in the second half there in a very, very wet night. And they've done that all season. They've come back really strong in the second half of the game. So they've just got to hope tonight just to stay in touch with the Buffs early and uh, let's see what happens from there. But for their first year in the league, they've done an outstanding job. As you said, four rounds to go. The Buffs need to win this one to secure a place in the five that'll lock it away from Pint. They've only got two games left after this one tonight because they've got the bye in the final round. They take on Southern Districts, the ladder leaders, who just had an 89-point win over Tiwi here earlier in a game that was called off by a bit of lightning. And then to finish off their season, they finished off with the way they started. They take on the Nightcliff Tigers. So uh, they probably do need to pick up the points tonight to have a real chance to play any hope of finals football. Yeah, they do. And uh, it'll be that final spot. And look, the, you know, you never say never, but the other game that's on tomorrow will be Wanderers versus Waratahs. So if, if form is the big player, yep. then you would see that star, uh, districts we already know are going to stay on top. Tars will maintain their second spot, and Saints, if they do knock off Nightcliff, will stay. Will then continue in uh, third spot. Um, and then the question then becomes: Can Pint knock off Buffs? And if they do that, they will jump. But they will jump equal with Nightcliff in terms of premiership points. So that's really the key. Yep. And then it'll come down to that fifth spot. Now, it all comes down to what Nightcliff can do against St Mary's, and we're going to be calling that game as well. But so, so very much a lot of interest in this game for the Pines Football Club, the Green Ants, and their supporters. Absolutely. And the next one, a big one, I'm looking forward to, of course, the Tigers taking on St Mary's, a big rivalry game. That what it always is. Uh, of course, this one today, as I said, uh, Buffs win this one, and they lock themselves into the finals. A couple of players that we should be keeping an eye out for tonight across the Buffs team. Well, look, um, I don't think we can go past them. I'm just looking for him out there now. Now, but um, 
Um, I'm just making sure he's out looking for his blonde hair, but Mitch Robinson um, had a pretty good game in the rep game last week, and uh, he's been one of the consistent players. Uh, he's actually, um, I'm just being told, he's, uh, that's why I can't find him. He's actually got a bit of a hamstring issue, so they're going into the side minus one of their better midfielders. Otherwise, they still have got the efforts of Ryan Pendlebury, who came into his own just before the rep game. Um, of course, they've got Patrick Bowles. Bradley Stokes, who I think uh, was probably a little bit um, underrated. He, he, his, effort, his effort leading up to the rep game and deservedly a selection in that yep. rep game has been tremendous for um, the Buffaloes team. So, you know, I think they're the types of players. And, the, and then the magician of Liam Holtz fits. The difficulty is we have had rain, we have had uh, slippery conditions. We'll see how Liam responds to that. Uh, 27 degrees here at the moment. They're starting to see a little bit of a uh, break in the grey sky, but of course we'll keep an eye on tonight for the lightning, which is, uh, we don't mind playing in the rain up here in the top end, but the lightning bolt sort of uh, caused a bit of a problem, obviously, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, for Pint, as I said, had a great second half. See some great runners in Matty Ryan and Jet Trotter and uh, and Sylvia Yosef and a few of the other guys out there tonight. As I said, an early start for them will be keen. Yeah, and I think they've actually got, uh, and, and he was the number one ruckman in the rep side, which is Brock Carter. And, and Pint will be looking for that first use of the ball. And uh, I think that he, if he can get it down to Thomas Schott, and then, um, as you talked about with Quicksilver, uh, Silver Yusuf, then Pint will be a formidable outfit. One of the things we're talking about uh, before I got upstairs here was about uh, how well Shannon Motlop has managed to keep the Pints Green Ants in a disciplined side, not only uh, from from the way that they go about with the free kicks, but also from the way that they play in their structure. So Shannon has really brought to the team, he's wanted a particular style of football and the Green Ants haven't let him down with that. They haven't looked starstruck all season, right from the very first game, as I said, against the Tigers. They've certainly not given up on any game and uh, been right in there for a lot of them. They had a draw against the Tiwi Bombers that uh, they probably should have pinched that one and uh, a couple of games this season they should have been in. But the Ruckman for Pine, he'll be a lot happier to come today, tonight against the Ruckman who's not 200 centimetres and, <laughs> and uh, no. in the end I think it, about half and through the third quarter I think he just stood back and just watched the Ted gave a play. No, we're watching that South from Randall Ruckman uh, on uh, last Saturday night which was Solomon James and yeah, uh, yeah 200 centimetres tall and uh, mobile as and it was a great spectacle between those two players. I mean, I think Brock, I think Brock probably got his own as good as uh, Solomon James was. I think Brock Carter certainly held his own. But you know, point across the ground that Mitchell Lowe. I, I should. Uh, it's remiss of me not to mention him. He has been a tremendous defender for the Green Ants this year. Probably a little bit unlucky, um, but uh, he has been uh, a good defender, and he's had contributors assist in people like Ashley Mullane. So. So I think there's a, this game, on balance, is going to be good. Um, however, I'd probably just give it Nick. I'm going to give it a little bit to Darwin, just based around the pace. Yep. I think they've just got a little bit too much pace for Pines. And I think that uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that unfolds. But uh, basically, I think Darwin will be the side that's uh, got their nose in front but it might well come down to a bounce of the ball. Absolutely, and a big, as I said, stick around for this game. Even if uh, Buffs do get ahead early, point, a big comeback side in the third quarter. Just about to take the toss now as we get ready. We are running about 10 minutes late because of the earlier lightning strikes that did call off, as I said. The latter lead to Southern Districts defeated the Tiwi Bombers by 89 points with the game called off just at the end of the third quarter. So Southern Districts going in with a big win today, but it was very, very, very wet here in the top end and uh, a tough game for this afternoon for the Bombers who had need to get home. So just on on uh, on a few tips at the moment, what do you think about here between Darwin Pints? Who do you who do you think will win this? Oh, I've become a Pints fan all of a sudden. I, and everyone knows I'm a Tigers uh, fanatic, but uh, Pints have really impressed me this season. I've not seen a game where they've let me down, where I've thought that they were blown away. And I just think they may have a bit of run as well on the buff on buffs here as well. But you know, guys like Liam Holtz, Fitz, and Stokes and whatnot are pretty handy out there for the uh, for the buffs. So it would be very interesting. But the wet ground will slow the buffs down a little bit, and the fitness, as you said, that uh, the uh, the Pint guys and Shannon Motlop have, have kept really, really fit this year. And so very interested to see what happens. My thing would be that would hope Pint would kick away early or stay in the game early, and then we have a big second half. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to which side can hold their own. I think probably the slipperier, the uh, the wetter conditions will probably satisfy the Green Ants a little bit better. They're a bit more of a bigger bodied side, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, 
and certainly with the Buffaloes, they've got a lot of in and under types and who have managed to um, take on far bigger opponents head on. Um, just in some of your tips for the re for the remainder of this round, Nightcliff. I mean, we'll get to them later on, but Nightcliff Saints. Oh, I, I hope Nightcliff. They had a good win last week. They, um, I'm going to pick the Nightcliff to win that one, and of course. Uh, well, tomorrow at, at uh, Tracy Village, Waratah will need to win that one just to lock away that second spot and keep some pressure on Southern Districts toward the last couple of rounds of the season. So I think Waratah will get that one, and I'm pretty sure, I'm hope, fingers crossed, Nightcliff, which will pretty much lock away the top five if Nightcliff beats St Mary's. Yeah, it will. It'll make it, well, put it this way, it'll make it very, very difficult. And Wanderers, of course, of Waratahs, apart from the fact it's usually, uh, uh, they, well, it's usually played on Australia Day and they chase the Federation Cup. So there's a fair bit of feeling goes into that game. There's a lot of good rivalry between the two. And I think that'll be a great game at Tracy Village tomorrow afternoon. Um, I actually think that, uh, I think St Mary's will do enough to uh, get over the top of Nightcliffe. They've been in tremendous form leading up to this. And I think that... Uh, Tomorrow, I think, winning form's always good form and Waratahs have been on the boil. And, and Wanderers, unfortunately, have come close a couple of times and just haven't been able to get across the line, even though they'll be at home ground. We'll talk about the, the uh, Nightcliff game next. But the last time those guys met, Nightcliff caught, caught 18 points yeah. in that game and only lost by two in the end. So anything can happen, and those two sides always fight it off. But we get ready for this one, ladies and gentlemen, here at TAO Stadium for... The Men's Premier League, the Darwin Buffaloes are taking on Pint. Atkinson versus Carter, and it's one out by Carter. Quick foot down into the centre half position. Yusuf got underneath it, couldn't quite. Penrith got underneath it, couldn't quite get a hold of it. Loose on the ground, out of centre half forward for the uh, the Green Ants. Atkinson again in there, and it's gone straight into the Pints forward 50. Oh, leading the race to the ball there uh, was the big man, Winter Irving. He couldn't quite grab it. Now it comes out to Silver Useless with a right foot snap and through for a point. So the Green Ants open the day with a quick point. As that field umpires, number five, Tom Bissescobe, Mark Noonan out there in number 20, and Kyle Edison in number four. And, of course, 500-gamer goal of Keith Pratt and Joan Wood at the other end. Bradley Stokes goes to Jared Stokes. He then kicks it out wide, looking at Patrick Bowles, who waited underneath it, didn't quite get it. Now they've got the runaway through Moroni. Moroni picks out his teammate in McBean. They turn and go. Do the uh, as Armat Watkins sent it in Stafford, and it's been picked out by is that Holt Spitz. It is Liam Holt Spitz. As easy as you like, spun it around onto the right and hits the point post. Scores a level one each. Had a bit more time there. He came out of the pocket fairly easily and uh, could have taken a bit more time. But decided to run around the corner and unfortunately hit the post. No, they uh, had an opportunity there and perhaps wasted. Mitchell Lowe, been one of the better defenders in the entire competition over the course of this season so far. He goes up and the picked out his teammate, Burnett. Burnett, hurried, kicked. Oh, out on there his own is Winter Irving. All on his own. And the big man will take the mark and have an opportunity to go back and have a shot at goal. He doesn't. He goes over top instead to a running teammate. Right foot snap at goal. Across the face and out of bounds. No, through for a point. Well, again... That was McMahon and perhaps another wasted opportunity. So both sides, I think, starting like this, Nick, because they know what's at stake. Absolutely. Fair bit of pace out there already. We've gone from either end uh, twice now and uh, both had two opportunities there to settle it down. Yeah, I'd probably be wanting if I was uh, Shannon Motlop as Armat Watkins with the ball just chips it over the top to Liam Holtz-Fitz, who's had to come a long way down. Matty Ryan... Pint Skipper staying with him. Mullane couldn't quite get it. Oh, Armat Watkins, beautiful one-handed scoop up on the boot straight away. Bouncing away from Stafford. It's close to the boundary line. It's gone out of bounds, though, under pressure. Great pickup from Armat Watkins just then. Absolutely. Stafford did well there. He had the boundary line on his side. He played it really, really well. And uh, the boundary on propinned him as it went out. Carter. Ball's going to go short, so they'll bring it back and they'll throw it in again. Ball just slipped out at the time and didn't quite get some height. Going to get heavier out there on that wet ground as well. After, after I would a while. think so. Although, you know, in the past, historically, TIO has always been a good draining ground here. Yep. Carter got his hands on it. Wrapped up, though. Was shot. And of course, Thomas in the rep side last week. Thomas shot. 
over the top, Pendlebury. His, his kick is cut off by Smith. And the ball will be thrown in again. Good pressure out there, and it's a good pace, Nick. Yeah, great pace already. They're starting a few openings as well, so a bit opportunities out there. They just need to take them. Atkinson. The ball's gone out of bounds again. I think we're going to see a fair bit of this tonight. I think both sides will be prepared to play safety. But when it opens up, they will spread very, very quickly. They both set themselves there. Over the top was Atkinson, and he's going to get a free kick as a consequence. Advantage is paid. Jared Stokes sends it up into full forward. It's all pints up there at the moment. They just knock it away. Collinson tries to break the tackle, but can't, and gets taken out of bounds. Will they... In good field position here. Stafford's going to take the ruck. Carter fights his way forward. Oh, shot just got dragged off the ball. Stafford with big body. Collinson with a hurried kick, smothered off the boot. Comes back to shot. Hurried handball out. Gets away from Bolch. Oh, quick hands over the top from Tregoeth. Yeah. And uh, free kick's been found, and it's going to go to uh, Henry. In fact, uh, it'll go to Matty Ryan. Got taken high there. Bolch on the mark. He's got a kick to a contest up the line. Armat Watkins, though, has no one to compete against. So he can send it back inside the forward 50 for the Buffaloes. Bolch tries to punch it away. Free kick's been found. It's going to go against Thomas Bolch for a marking infringement. Go to the Green Ants. And trying to keep possession here as they bring it out. They will through Tregoeth. He doesn't have a huge amount of options. So he's going to have to play on and then just kick it long. Winter Irving is there. It's punched away though. Oh, quick nice hands on the outside. They're going to keep it moving. McMahon can't quite get a hold of it. Tackled without it. Ethan Penrith picks it up. He runs over the top. Oh, coming through there with clean hands was Harvey. Had a couple of good possessions then. There was a flash of lightning to the right-hand side of screen towards the airport. It's a fit, little bit of way, but we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, Braden Taylor was uh, helping out there. Brock Carter sets himself in front. Just wrapped up, and they're going to restart play there. So Sterling Mitchell has gone into the ruck for the Buffaloes, number two. Carter, bigger body. Now there's a run out, and it's going to come through Clark. Clark's kick's a little bit of an up and under. It's going to go there, but well read by Collinson. And Collinson just used his body to time it well. He's got options in the middle. Whether or not he can see them or whether or not he can get to them is the question. It's not a great kick. Bolts, though, gets it. Hurried handball, kick away, can't do it. Socket off the ground by Nicky. Mullane's in there, balks one way, then goes back to his teammate in Doyle. Doyle with a right foot, kick out wide. It's got the runner there. Now they'll get up onto that centre wing. The Green Ants, Silver Yusuf was one target. Oh, one-handed handball, let go. Play on is the call. Pendlebury, handballs over the top. They can build here. This is Bowles. The Buffaloes can build, looking for Stafford. Punched away from him. There's that pint defence against. Now there's a problem. Liam holds fifth snap, right foot. And it's gone across the face and through for a point. Great build up there from the Buffaloes as play restarts straight away for the Green Ants. It's in the hands of McMahon. He goes back in board. Shot. Thomas Shot takes it wide. Tiabarella back into McMahon. Now Pines can go again. Flanagan. Long inside the 50, Penrith with a big lead. They have to bring it back onto the 50. He's a long way out. Kyle Irving's come a long way up. Someone's got to get into that square for the Green Ants. Instead, Ethan just goes right across and finds Taylor. Taylor was there for a while, waved with his hand. He was, wasn't he? Yeah, he gave him time to get into the position he wanted him and then just dropped it in there. But he was there a long time by himself. Handballs it off. 
Plays on quickly, does uh, the number eight, Jet Trotter. And Trotter's put the first goal on the board for the Green Ants. Well, that was clever, and I've got to say to you, Ethan Penrith set that up. Taylor, dr Taylor drifted down through that middle corridor, and I said, Nick, yeah. that when the game opened up and there would be space, that they would spread quickly, and they did. Absolutely did, and Penrith had a couple of nice touches early in the game. He's had a couple of more good, good points leads. early um, leads, and he's opened them up, and they look really good there coming forward, and one of the other good things, Point looked great back. When they were in trouble early there at that, uh, a few minutes ago, they had a lot of numbers back, and they got out of there with a couple of good handballs, one above the head, which you'd look at again, but the rest of them were all pretty clear, and they did well getting out of there. No, this is uh, going to be quite the arm wrestle as far as everyone is concerned. Well, it looks like Tyler Flanagan's going to uh, go has gone into the middle, so they've replaced one big man with another. Sterling Mitchell is in there for the buffs, and he's got the leap and the bounce first up. Matt Ryan wrapped up. Flanagan tries to punch it out. Braden Taylor comes to Ryan. Ryan's kick though is chopped off to Aaron Stokes. Here comes McMahon. McMahon with a right foot penetrating kick at goal, Good touched defense. on the line by Robinson. William Robinson in the side. Making his debut tonight. Great bit of goalkeeping there. He got his hand of that one. He had the only guy who was going for it and uh, saved an absolute certain goal. In fact, uh, Harvey was the unlucky one there. It was Alex Harvey on the burst. Buffs. Timmy Eldridge has just been caught. Let go. No, he's been pink no, for holding pinked. the ball. Ran around in a circle. Had more than prior opportunity before he got wrapped up. He got rounded up really well there by a couple of pints, guys. He had nowhere to go. He, he didn't want to take the risk kicking cross goal, and then the umpires just grabbed him for it. And there's Harvey again. Now, Harvey was the one that streamed through the middle previously. I called him as uh, McMahon, but as Alex Harvey. And he now has an opportunity to get Pint's second, board, uh, second goal in about two minutes. And he does it. So Alex Harvey is on the board with one. The other goal scorer is Jet Trotter. And so Darwin yet to get a goal. Two goals, 3.15 to Pint, two points to Darwin. But Darwin, the Buffs have had a couple of opportunities. One was a real, certainly they should have got where he hit the post, and the other one was a snap out of the pack, which he did really well to get to in the first place. But this game's got a fair bit to go, obviously. We've only just into the um, 10 minutes or so into the first quarter. and uh, But Pint have started off the ground really well. They have, and there's a sense of urgency among the Green Ants, I sense. Uh, the way they, uh, excuse the pun, Nick, the way the Green Ants are swarming, they are not giving the Darwin Buffalo's opponents any opportunity to get anywhere. Atkinson's gone back into the middle for Darwin as he's up against Tyler Flanagan. Good contest. One out by Flanagan, though. Coming through is Jared Stokes with pace and strength, and he just puts it on the boot. Centre half forward. McBean got taken out. Let go, play on's the call, Fitz Holt, Holt Fitz can't get a hold of it cleanly. He comes back for another bite, Clark just punches it away. Loose on the ground, the Buffaloes through uh, Favoretto. Still can't get it, diving on top. Clark bundled out. Here they come again, Pint just down to centre wing, but it's Pendlebury with strength and height. He'll take the mark to settle it down. So Ryan Pendlebury. Oh, just getting up there was Winter Irving just to in interfere with Patrick Bowles who was waiting for it to get to him. Comes out to Carter, then Ciavarella. Bouncing ball. Here comes Trotter, long way out. Good body there. Silver uses came through to help. Maroney though for Darwin can clean it up. The kick's not great and has gone out of bounds and will be thrown in. I think he might have been lucky there that he uh, didn't try very hard to keep that in in that situation. He didn't have anyone to kick to, but uh, disguised it very, very well. No. Atkinson got to the front position and won it straight out very quickly, though, but it fell into the hands of Chalmers with a bouncing ball. Irving just got wrapped up by Robinson. He had nowhere to go. I think he's going to go for holding the ball, yeah. and he is. He took about three steps, but he had nowhere to go. Robinson was all over him. It was always going to be... It was always going to be a good tackle, and it was, he was always going to get rewarded for it, you would think. Robinson, though. Again. Atkinson is up there. Three or four pints went in the air. Staying, though, down on the ground was Gaiden. Comes back out. Kick there. Pendlebury. Bouncing ball. Wasn't good. Trying to run over the top of it, though, was Burnett. 
Comes back out to Pendlebury. Bolch just waited for it a little bit, I felt, and punched away from him. Yeah, I think he thought he had a bit more time then than he had, and he got yeah. pinned because he did, didn't really throw himself at that ball, and the defender was always going to get around him. Good contest here. Oh, there's shot. Read it beautifully off the hands of Carter. Out to Yusuf. Punched away from him, though. Now comes yeah. Shot, who just rallied up his own kick. Now it's out to where Alex Harvey is. This will be an interesting foot race between him and Bradley Stokes. Oh, Harvey's got his measure. Sockers it on to keep it in board. Stokes is going to recover first, though. Oh, then the kick was the actual handball over. Wasn't that good from Stokes. Oh, now it's come back out. Oh, great tackle there from Timmy Eldridge. Play on is the call. Advantage is paid. It's gone through for a point. And that was Yusuf. Well, Stokes did the right thing, and yep. he ended up knocking it further forward towards the points goal in the process. Both teams did really well there on the break. Timmy Eldridge put a great tackle on there, his opponent, which I think was Mullane. Eldridge just looking up board. Comes to Aaron Stokes. There's a 14-point lead to the point at the moment, the score, but we've got him at three. It's actually two points to Darwin Buffaloes at the moment. Carter. Punched away from him. Punched away by him. Shot. Quick hands over to Mullane. It got taken out high. Let go. Should have. Wasn't picked up. Nicky. He's got a heap of time and space. He can look up board. He's got ball, Bolch and ignores him. Over the back is Collinson, but the kick is going to fall short. He could have run in then. He was by himself. He had all the time in the world. No one was telling him what was going on. But No. Smith is the one that chopped it off. So Smith gives it over to Mullane. And the Green Ants just got out of trouble, I feel, Nick, just then. Yep. Yeah, they did. He had plenty of time to run. He could have run straight in open there. Picked up there. It's in the hands of Chalmers. 50 metre paid. And uh, someone ran across the mark or ran too close to the mark and a 50 metre's been paid. And so the Green Ants... Get to go right into attack from here, you would think. So Chalmers has an opportunity. The big man, Winter Irving, is going to be his target in that right forward pocket. Although dropping in there was Trotter. Irving cleans up like a rover at six foot two. Now it looks like Harvey's going to have a crack from outside 50, and Bolch is the one that's got it. In fact, it was McMahon. I'll get those two right eventually by the fourth quarter. So Bolch has marked this in Pint's right forward pocket, the defend. The, for uh, for uh, Pints and he just goes in short to Pendlebury handball over the top comes to Clark Clark looking for Jared Stokes bunched away by Flanagan though handball back over, McBean's there clean hands, that was good and it's been punched and gone out of bounds Tanner Coltart was in the middle of that play One just feels that uh, Darwin needs some of their midfielders to just lift slightly. Coltart I'll put into that category. Bolch I'll put into that category. Just slightly lift a little bit more. They're certainly getting good service out of their back six so far, the Buffaloes. Sterling Mitchell, front position, and got his hands on it first as a consequence. Then wraps up his ruck opponent, Brock Carter, who waited for it. You think they just need that first goal? Settle them down and, uh, yeah. and keep going here because they've got plenty of opportunities. Flanagan, hurried kick. It's going to be a bouncing ball, though, and it's going to come to Burnett. Burnett's handball over the top, gives it over to McMahon. McMahon has got Jet Trotter. It's going to, will it sit up for him? Yes, it does. So Trotter on the left, centre and corridor. It's going to bounce. It's not going to get anyone. Pendlebury's going to come through with body to clean it up. It's going to go over the top to Eldridge. Eldridge's kick oh, was... Uh, to a teammate there, I think it was uh, Sterling Mitchell, it was. He can't get away with it. Oh, full, on, full on physical contest there. And a free kick's been paid against Pints and against Alex Harvey. As umpire Bitterscombe goes down and holds his right knee. That doesn't look good no. at all. In fact, it doesn't look good at all. And he's reversed a free kick as a consequence. And Eldridge... Just might want to be, be careful well, here because I think Bitterscombe's going to report him. I think he is. I think he said something then. He stopped there. And he's definitely pushed the player into him and knocked down the umpire. If you looked at a bit of a replay of it, it's, it's uh, yeah, if we could clumsy just... to say the least. 
If uh, we have an opportunity at a replay, we might just see how that all unfolded. No, we won't get one, which is probably not a bad thing for Timmy Hill. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, th it was, I don't think it was intentional. It was clumsy. The umpire was in there in the middle of it. It's good to see that he's up and running back was there. He's fine. It was just a knock on the knee. As Harvey sends it in. Oh, picked up there by Ethan Penrith. Oh, now there's danger. And the danger is in the form of Dylan Flanagan, who puts it on the right boot and from 35 out scores. Yep, they've been taking their opportunities. Pint, they missed one really early in the game, but since then they've been taking everyone they've had land in their direction. Three goals for 22 to two behinds of the Darwin Buffaloes. And as I said, Buffs have had a couple of opportunities that they should have put through. You're watching the round 15 here from TAO Stadium in Darwin, Larrakee country for the Men's Premier League. Darwin Buffaloes taking on Pint. And uh, a good start for Pint, which is what I was hoping. Well, it is. it has been a good start. They've certainly worked the ball forward, and they've certainly, again... It, it comes back to, this, to the playing structure that Shannon's got inside that side that he has drilled into that side so far this season or during the season where they've been there to help each other out. You know, they're prepared to throw the handball around as uh, it's punched forward there by Tyler Flanagan. Loose on the ground. Tyler Flanagan comes over, picked up by... wrapped up Tanner Coulthard, gets his pints opponent. Sia Varela and... The ball will be balled up. But it, what I was saying is that, is that Shannon has got them going prime so well. And Cameron Stokes has got his uh, early on. Cameron Stokes, Buffaloes have their work cut out for them. Of course, the coach can't play the game. It's up to the players. But certainly the Pints players know what's expected of them. One out by Tyler, though. It comes back to Coulthard. Smothered off the boot. Or just charging through there was uh, Armat Watkins, but it's going to be a turnover. Penrith, who's been busy in this first quarter, comes out to Stokes. Robinson sort of kicks around the corner. Thomas Clark has also been involved for the Buffaloes. He goes back in board looking for Mitchell Dangerous. Mitchell, though, is up to the contest. Marches, marks it nicely. And then he goes to the right. This is going to be danger in the form of Silver Yusuf. So Yusuf is a fair distance out. I'd suggest he's going to kick from the 50 metre line but you know I've seen him kick yep. it from pints he that, kicked a long one here a couple of weeks ago yeah. I thought he was just out of his range but he's he certainly took took it on himself that night and he's done the same here, he's gone back a long way and he's got no, absolutely no uh, no angle to speak of so he's going to kick from 50 out, he sets it up nice and high, he's gone off to the right, will bounce through for a point there's no breeze here at the moment. It's like a steep and blue sky, which is good for the later games as well. So uh, a bit of a breeze there may have helped him, but he certainly wasn't shy having a go. No, William Robinson just fumbled that a little bit, and so he's been called to play on. Here they come again, the Green Ants. They're just peppering oh. away, and it's over the top to Harvey. Harvey just plays on quickly, grubbers it through. Been a couple of times now that uh, the Buffs have been caught over the back by a really quick kick in, and that was terrible. There's four defenders looking at each other going, where did he come from? And uh, he's just stayed there and waited while the ball came out, hoping that one of his guys would get it and quickly put it back in. And that's exactly what happened. Well, we're at the 22-minute mark here in the first term, so just waiting for this first quarter to end, and then Darwin, the Darwin Buffaloes can regroup at the quarter-time break. Look, they've done enough uh, in terms of push their way forward. But uh, as you can see on that scoreboard, nine scoring shots to two. And I've got to tell you, the Darwin Buffaloes have had it inside their 50. But the Green Ants have been repelling every advance so far. So they have had limited opportunities. But they have certainly been driving the ball through the midfield. Tyler Flanagan up against Atkinson. One out by Flanagan. Stokes gets it. Couldn't quite get control of it. It comes out to shot. Jared Stokes just sockers it sideways. Was clever. Sia Varela. Just a little chip over the top. Bounced off the chest. In comes Nicky. Dances round one. Gives a hurried handball over to Bolch. Now it's socket off the ground by Nicky. McBean's in there. Stumbles over his opponent, Mullane. Stafford coming through with big body. Handball. Just like they've done so many times already this quarter. Doyle just got wrapped up there. Still loose on the ground. Now it comes out. Clark pushes off one, then puts it on the boot. 
I think it's going to go out of bounds on the fall, and it is. It has, yep. They have done that really well tonight, Pine have. We're handballing in that little tight corridor area in defence and managed to keep control and uh, put pressure back on the buffs. They play a form of keepy off. Yep. Pines. And then uh, two or three quick handballs, and then they decide to kick. And they're going to run it out. It's a big, long kick, too. Gets it well and truly outside their 50 metre zone, but it might come back in just as quick as it went out. Mullane, though. He's the steadier for the Green Ants. Nothing out here on the right-hand side for him at all. Someone's starting to move now, but he, yep, he's going to come out this side, but he was had to wait. He's got Penrith on the burst. Ethan Penrith has got a good spot. Got interfered with, let go. It was all fierce as far as umpire Noonan was concerned. Braden Taylor has set himself there. Punched away from him, though, by Coulthard. Penrith has regathered. Timmy Eldridge and Penrith have just ran a physical body and will be thrown in. Well, both players had eye for the ball then Absolutely. as the quarter time siren sounds. The end of their first quarter here at TAO Stadium. Point four goals, five, 29, leading the Darwin Buffaloes by two points. We'll be back shortly with the second quarter.
Welcome back to the AFL NT's coverage of the 22-23 TAO NTFL season here at TAO Stadium. Round 15, which come into the second quarter of the men's Premier League competition match between Darwin Buffaloes and Pint. My name's Nick Danks, commentary partner this afternoon, Ashley Manakaris. Great start for the uh, first quarter for the Pint. Yeah, it was, and I think we're seeing uh, a fantastic game unfold here. Cameron Stokes is on screen there talking to his charges, and he will be looking for, he would have been looking forward to this quarter time break to give an opportunity, A, to get in front of them, and for B, to be able to get the Darwin Buffaloes to reset. They, uh, they had to do a fair bit of chasing in that quarter as Pints took their opportunities, and um, we can see they only, uh, they had nine, uh, nine scoring shots to two. Nick in that opening term. I don't know it's reflective of the battle in the midfield, but uh, they've ended up with four scorers and, uh, sorry, three goal scorers. Alex Harvey's got a double. Um, Jet Trotter's got one and Dylan Flanagan got one. And uh, Dylan Flanagan and uh, Alex Harvey's goals were uh, pretty spectacular. And also, uh, Pint haven't scored a goal again. They've had a couple of opportunities, one to hit the post and one that he snapped, which was a really tough one. But then another one which he had plenty of time and he kicked it out of bounds on the fall. So they have gone forward a bit. If they have got a couple of those on the board, it would look more respectable. So don't be surprised if the bus come back in the second half. There's no breeze around at the moment. We're starting to see a little bit more less uh, scary clouds that were here earlier in the day when Southern Districts defeated the Tiwi Bombers by 89 points with the game called off at three-quarter time because of lightning. We were delayed for about the first 12 minutes here with lightning. We've had a couple of flashes in the distance, but nothing around the ground, so we'll keep an eye on that. But uh, the rain has stayed away as well at the moment, and uh, it's been pretty quick out there. Yeah, it has been very quick. Just one quick thing. The... Um uh, there's just one player on report so far. We saw Timmy Eldridge go on report in that first quarter, which might play on his mind. But the physicality has been pretty good. Both sides have uh, concentrated on the ball. And uh, best, some of the best contests are around this middle of the ground. As it's one out by Carter with a handball with their tap over there. Well, Pendlebury is going to be first to it, though. His handball up over the top of the ground. Pints are going to go straight into attack just as they finished off the last quarter. It's up there looking for Winder Irving. Couldn't quite get a hold of it. Pendlebury doesn't worry about trying to pick it up. He tries to soccer it on. Then it's quick hands out. Loose. Atkinson comes back out to Hell Robinson. Robinson took his opponent high, and a free kick will go to Pints. And they will go back and have a quick shot at uh, have a clear shot at goal. And it's Taylor, very much been an in and under type for Pints this whole season. I think I referred to him one day out at uh, DXC as a bit of a serial pest. That's right. Because he was getting under the skin <laughs> of his opponents. In fact, it's not Taylor. I made it. Merely that's Tregworth. But uh, very much put his head over the ball then, which is what we've seen from both sides for the last uh, in the first quarter anyway. So Tregoa has a chance to put Pints on the board early in this second term, and I think it might have just snuck in, and it does. Yes, it did. It's the start that uh, Pint wanted, and uh, they certainly wouldn't have wanted the buff side there. They're going to have to start to settle down in this quarter because, as I said all along, Pint are a very, very good second-half side. They've run out third quarters in every game I've seen this year. I've seen them about seven or eight times. So uh, this is a great start for Pint. Well... We've barely gone 90 seconds here in the second term. What's interesting is uh, Brock Carter is giving his opponent, is giving his teammates in the middle there every opportunity. He's got shot. He's got Chalmers in there. He's given them every opportunity with first use of the ball. We found he, he did that in the rep game. Atkinson just bumps down. Pendlebury soccers it on. Collinson comes in, picks it up for Buss, and then handballs it back out. And they send it in up forward, looking for Stafford. Doyle's there, though. Had about three bites of it. Couldn't get clean possession. Mullane, diving handball over to his teammate, who's just going to run it out over the boundary line. And Smythe will be the one that will stop play. Pretty unlucky there. He did have a couple of grabs at that one, but he was defended or attacked well just stopped him from taking that clean mark. No, and that comes back to the slippery conditions here. Carter with hands out. Collinson, dangerous from that left pocket with his left foot. Well, he certainly gave it every opportunity. Went through for a point. They can go back to Mullane if they want. He's got someone deep out wide on the uh, right of screen. I think he's going to ignore him. He's going to go to the big man Carter instead if he can get there. Carter just takes it on the second bite under pressure from Atkinson. 
Carter's got Yusuf further up the ground, who's managed to get a yard on his opponent. And it's going to be marked instead by Ryan. Ryan in front of Bolch. Ryan up the line looking for Winder Irving. Not coming through as Tregoworth with body, just uses his hips to shake off his opponent, then goes into the centre corridor. Handball out. Inside out kick came from Chalmers. Penrith couldn't quite get it. One handed handball. Jet Trotter steps around one. Yusuf picks it up. Hurry kick right foot through for a point. Both sides coming in today's game. Some pretty good form we had, of course, last week off of the, uh, the uh, rep game. But the week before that, part, um, Buffs defeated Palmerston by 24 points. And point came in from a big win, 38 point win over Wanderers. So they came in with pretty good form, but one on top at the moment. Oh, Moroni's kick, though, is chopped off. And they can go back in. Inside that forward 50 into the square. Irving with his body just gives William uh, Robinson a nudge out and it'll go through for another point. So just keeping the pressure on to the Darwin Buffaloes early on in this second term. A crucial game this. The winner of this, I mean, Darwin would want to win this to actually consolidate their spot in the five. Yep. And Pint want to win to get a spot in the five as Pendlebury. Little kick and lead. Picked up though by shot. Just kicks around the corner. Didn't really have a target in mind. It lands in the hands of Bradley Stokes. An opponent. Comes out to Moroni. Moroni's gone to centre wing. Finds Clark. Clark had a good first quarter. Gives a handball over to a running teammate. Clark now. Gets it back. Then he just chips it overboard. Finds Collins. Joey Collinson just puts it on the boot, up into the air. Stafford got one hand on it. Liam Holtz, Fitz did two. Bouncing ball towards the goal is gonna go through. It's the one they needed. He uh, took the opportunity. He's had a couple of chances today, Holtz, Fitz, and uh, he's always around those goals and having a good hot shot. And that one there, just bounced lucky for him. The defender uh, probably could have done a little bit better as the ball came in, but of course a wet ball and the uh, slippery conditions, it just got away from him. And Holtz, Fitz just picked it up and uh, had a snap. No, and they, slowly built it up outside of there from the uh, defensive end and kind of went coast to coast. Collinson proving to be a good link, but Thomas Clark has, has been a major contributor so far in this in this first half for Darwin Buffaloes, and you just sense that they need one or two of the others to step up. Clark, Clark has clearly put his hand up saying that he's prepared to lead today's joint captain of course of Darwin Buffaloes, or he's um, vice captain, and uh, you've got Patrick Bowles in the middle there Sterling Mitchell wins out. It's going to get cleaned up by Flanagan, though. One of the goal scorers for Pints. Loose on the ground. Diving onto it is shot. He's going to get pinged for holding the ball. So Bowl sends it in. Stafford's a flyer at the back. Punched away. Loose. They're going to try and get it out, though. It's come into the hands, though, of uh, Coulthard. Coulthard's picked out Collinson with a diving mark. And so Joey Collinson will go back and have a shot at goal. Not sure about a standing start shot at goal for Collinson from here. If he was on the run, I wouldn't mind that. And a 50 metre penalty has been paid. And for players inside the protected zone. And so Collinson goes from a maybe to a gimme and puts it through. You said you wanted to get a bit closer for that shot, and uh, the umpire must have heard you, because he was pointing a lot, though. The umpire was waving a few players, and you know, they're having a discussion amongst themselves at the point back line what happened there, but I think he gave them the opportunity to get away, and they wouldn't go away. Yeah, there was clearly a protected zone set up, and uh, it was ignored. So, within a minute, Darwin have got two and clawed it back. 37 plays 15. Having a look at the weather, the uh, clouds have broken up a fair bit. Uh, there's not a little bit coming a bit later on, but right through this game we should be fine. And there's not much around. It's going to be a uh, very little rain going to come through in, by the end of this game. Well, let's uh, let's hope it stays away because it's proven to be quite the spectacle so far as Darwin clawing their way back into this game as we approach the eight-minute mark. 
Tyler Flanagan versus Sterling Mitchell. Mitchell got his hands on it, punched away though by a shot. Body there from Thomas Clark allowed Coulthard to get space and time, but it gets picked up in the end by Pints. And they send it inside 50. Williamson was a flyer. Winter Irving's there, gets two hands on it. And got it the second time. And as a consequence, we'll go back and have a deliberate shot at goal. It's a pretty confident shot on goal, this guy. It is, and he very difficult man to mark simply because of his height. Robinson hasn't done a bad job, but but just then his height was able to punch it up, and then he got it second time cleanly as Kyle Winter Irving comes in and just hits the post on the way through, I suspect. Yeah, umpire Keith Pratt, 500th Premier League game for umpire goal umpire Keith Pratt signals a point. You can guarantee it's going to be a point when you talk him into it. <laughs> Pratty as uh, Pendlebury comes out looking for Collinson. Clever hands back. The kick is a little bit underground there as they try and get it out through Favretto. And the ball goes out of bounds. Flanagan and Mitchell will line up. Flanagan pints. Bigger bodied of the two. But Mitchell's held his own brilliantly. Well done. Taylor couldn't do it. Sock it off the ground and it's going to go to... It uh, is going to go to Favretto. And again, he can kick long. So they go from half back to half forward. Danger times here. Picked up by Holtz Fitz. Just kicked a great goal. He goes inside the 50, looking for Nicky. Cockham, Nicky's got his head. Borks then lets it go. Then goes at goals himself because he can kick him. That's three, and that's three in a row. So he did well, Holtz fits there. Picked that ball up well. Got got it away really quickly, and then uh, Nicky took the time and decided to have a snap. He did have a guy standing by himself in the goal square there. He could have handballed over the top, but he was pretty confident from where he was, and he's put that through. And as you said, it's put the game right back in tracks. It's only a 17-point lead now to Pint. They started off this quarter with a 27-point lead. Well, they've now got three in a row, which makes it really interesting as far as, uh, as, far as momentum for the Darwin Buffaloes go. Cameron Stokes, whatever he said at quarter time, they stood up and listened. So they're putting their hands up, not prepared. I mean, this, this is a crucial game for both clubs. One out there, though, by Flanagan. Socket off the ground, gone forward. It's going to help Pints out by Darwin Buffalo's more as Nicky tries to soccer it off the ground just to keep it in control. And in there, he wraps up his opponent, Gaiden. Umpire's going to ball that one up. He didn't have much opportunity. It was well defended, well attacked and well defended. No, and Nicky did his best to try and keep it in. Punch forward there by Mitchell. Collinson, quick hands out. Stokes is there, but they're going to clear it out. It's going to be a loose ball bouncing. Kyle Winter Irving balks one way. Now he's got to turn. Quick hands, but the kick's going to be in the hand, land in the hands of Bowles. So Patrick Bowles looking... He's got Sterling Mitchell there, who's presenting himself. And that's where he's going to go to. Good body on oh, the big guy. The big second ruckman takes it, then plays on quickly and picks out Stafford. Good build up there from the Darwin Buffaloes. Yeah, Nicky Favretto out there for the Buffs was pointing where to go down the wing. Then he was looking at coming in ball, but he sent him down that wing and then. The guys have come on pretty well there. Stafford, bit of a tough angle. We've got a pretty good view over his left shoulder. Let's see what he can do, and it's not a great kick. He just probably stabbed at that a little bit instead of kicking all the way through, and it's, as a consequence, gone out of bounds on the full. Yeah, I think he only took two steps then, so he did have a stab at it. And, uh, put it he could have put it to the top of the goal square. They had some bodies in there. Well, back in the middle corridor is courageous, but it's taken by Mullane, so they've got a little bit of space and time on now. This is danger for the Green Ants. And especially if Holtz Fitz is involved, and he can yep. snap it goal, and I think he's got it again. He'll take those all day if you give them to him. That's his second. Well, that is a costly error on behalf of the Green Ant defence. I mean, it was already courageous to go into the middle corridor. I don't know if we'll get a replay of that one either. 
It's a little bit of pushing and shoving going on there, but you're right, Costley, very brave to take that first kick in the middle. And then, uh, unfortunately, for the next one, the, the ball was fumbled. And from there on, Holtz Fitz, if you want to give him those, he'll say thank you. We'll put him away all night. And that was almost in the identical spot that he scored his first goal. Yep. So all of a sudden, the margin has gone is 11 points. And uh, Tanner Coltar, uh, sorry, Liam Holtz Fitz has got two goals and is a multiple goal scorer. And Alex Harvey's the multiple goal scorer for Pines. Back in the middle. One out there by Atkinson. They're starting to get on top in the ruck of the uh, Darwin Buffaloes. Here they go again. Coulthard just picks it up and dances around four opponents. Back into the middle. Holtz Fitz is there again. Danger. Dives on it. Trying to punch it out. Gets buried on by Doyle. Let go. Play on is the call. They can't pick it up. Now hammered out by Doyle. Out to Mullane, it comes out to him. So Pints, hopefully, if they can, yeah, they can, sliding. Waiting on, get a move on, being told to play on. Back into the pack there was Brock Carter, Atkinson asking the question about was I pushed in the back? And the ball will be thrown in. Well, errors proving to be the biggest problem for the Green Ants at the moment. They've made a couple and it's cost them goals. Yep. Margin back to 11 points. Pendlebury couldn't get a clean kick away. Oh, just charging through with Favretto. Now his right foot kick. Stafford's the flyer at the back. He got one hand on it, couldn't get two. Punched away from him. Stokes with speed. Tries to beat one. Gets run straight into a wall of Pints defenders. Dancing around there, looked like it was Smith. I reckon he's gone. He is. No, it was Chalmers. I'm sorry, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan was the one who took him on. And we'll see who's going to be the beneficiary of that kick. There's McBean. So Kyle McBean has an opportunity to put Darwin's fifth goal on the board and cut that margin to five points. Who would have thought? Absolutely. They needed to do this, though. They needed to come out this quarter and stamp some authority. As I said, they're a very fit side point, and they will come on in the second half. McBean from 40 out, directly in front. It's been punched and kept in play. It's called play on. Mullane now, though, steps back through. Wow, that must have been clear. Very close to the line. The goal umpire was in good position. Yeah, I thought it hit the post, but it obviously it hit the player and stayed in bounds. But uh, in the end, it came out with a point, which is... Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, and it was only come out of a point after the uh, after the contest. As Nicky, loose ball, sends it inside. As Holt Fitz wraps up an opponent, high tackle. And that's Smith. They've lost this exit to come to point. Have let's just pick that one up, but it's got him into trouble. But they were doing it well in the first quarter. They just lost it in this quarter. Yeah, they're making errors as Ryan presents himself as a target, but their kicks are falling short, coming out of defence, which are coach killers. Ben Smythe right across the ground, but still risky in the current climate. That one will look like it hit the ground, but. Umpire on the spot as Smythe gets it back. Now he goes out wide again. Yeah, they were pushing ball forward in the first quarter. It's time they've had about five kicks and they haven't got anywhere. So no, they and need to try and change that. And Buffs are probably locked up better in the back in the forward lock, back line as well. Oh, Carter with a good mark and a good mark above his head. But not only that, Nick, them, their kicks aren't hitting the target. Yeah. As Brock Carter just sends it long, but he puts it high. Robinson just punches it away. In there is Harvey. He's going to lead the race to the ball. Eldridge hot on his tail. Harvey gets it back, sends it in board, but there's no one there. Favoretto is going to run it out for Darwin. Darwin, he can go over to Thomas Clark, and the kick just goes over Clark's head. Spilled hands here. Nicky just sockers it off the ground looking for his skipper, Jared Stokes. He can't quite get it first time. Now he can have a second go at it. Now they're just going to hack it up, hack it off the ground. Stafford landed on his chest. They've managed to get it out through Doyle, have pints, just to steady it down in the hands of McMahon. 
McMahon with a steadier looks out. And that trot, trot up, comes in board to shot. Thomas shot on the lead looking for Yusuf, taken out in the contest. Oh, flying through was Flanagan, couldn't quite get a hold of it cleanly. Collinson is there to help out for Darwin. Now they're just going to go long up that line. It's punched away though. It was all points up there. One on three. Mullane putting pressure on his opponent. Kalen Russell just guides it out of bounds. No one talked to you then. I don't think he knew he's by himself. He could have taken a clean mark there. Had a go at it. As you said, there was one on three, but uh, I think he thought there might have been a few more buffs around him. Margin tightened right up. Ten points. Oh, I just slung out of him there. Was Car uh, Carter just slung his opponent out, Atkinson. Bolch. Stokes. There's Bowles. Just uses his hips to get out of that trouble. It's tapped forward to Clark. That was clever from Stokes. Stafford on the lead. You know, if he gets front positioned as Daniel Stafford, he's very, very hard opponent to beat. And he shows, he just showed yep. that then. Yeah, he's a big, big unit. It's hard to get around when he gets in on the lead on the front there. No, and with delivery onto his chest, it uh, makes it even harder. Doyle stood no chance there. Stafford. You'd think this is within his range, but he messed up a shot last time. Much better kick at goal this time. And in the search for distance, he's pushed it to the left of the goalpost. So no very little breeze out there to, to make any difference with it with the shots. But uh, they've come right back in this one, the buffs. Nine points of difference now. So Mitchell Lowe just looking for an option. He doesn't have a huge amount. Matty Ryan's just telling him to bring it all the way out and kick long. So he does. And Matty Ryan will set himself. And he got taken high and will get a free kick. Advantage is played. Tyler Flanagan wasn't quite ready for it. No advantage was paid. And so Ryan has a chance to restart. Good decision by the umpire then. The player wasn't ready for the advantage. He did get away with the end, but uh, he already blew the whistle to pull it back. And Irving, quick hands. Dylan Flanagan just comes on feet, off feet, and will go out of bounds. So a nine-point lead point as we're into time on in the second quarter. Tyler Flanagan got his chest on it. Comes quick hands out to, to Braden Taylor from Trotter. McMahon just plays on quickly. He's got the big man on the on the lead there. And Irving can't quite get it. They're going to come inboard looking for Flanagan and the diving. Flanagan just spills it. Just. They're going to run it out of here. Darwin, quick hands. Bolch. They do a one-two with Stokes. Then it comes to Bolch who gutsily takes a bounce in the wet conditions. Kalen Russell's there to pick it up. Misses it once but then gets it the second time. Then swings onto his right. He's got a leading hold spits but dropping back there was McMahon. Just to steady the ship. And Taxi Sia Varela. Just steadying the ship. Now he goes out wide. Oh. And uh, Mitchell Lowe had snuck up from full back. Just like rain falling here at TIO Stadium. Nothing major just yet. Sia Varela is all the way back. I'm trying to wind down the clock a little bit. But that can be danger game as McMahon gets it this time. Be a bit of a so to go, you would think, for the amount of goals in this quarter, but mm. he certainly has wanted to slow it down. Winter Irving. Now it's over the top, off hands. Alex Harvey tries to shake the tackle, manages to get one away to McMahon. McMahon's got at least one option out wide. It looks like Taylor. It is. No look handball to Smith, then back to Taylor, then back in board to the big man, Tyler Flanagan. Acting as the second ruck. Flanagan looking for Yusuf on the lead who takes a chess mark. Oh, he thought about playing on for a second, I thought. He did. He had a player on the ground and another player running in. He decided not to go. So he's going to go back, Silver Yusuf, and have a shot at goal. 
important goal for their point this one here, you would think, coming into half time. This is a steadier, yep. Nick, I would think. Yeah, they got the very first one in the first minute, and uh, the finish went off now would be pretty handy for them. Might give them a little bit of momentum going into the half time break for the second half. It goes across the face of goal. Diving mark there backwards, couldn't do it. Kept in play. As they bring it out, Darwin. Oh, there's McMahon. He's been busy in the last two or three minutes across the midfield. Just doesn't wait around, just sends it back in board. Yusuf was the target, but dropping back there was Pendlebury. Ryan Pendlebury. Over to a running teammate. Moroni. Moroni picks out our Matt Watkins. Buffs might be able to take this all the way up. They can't. There's a turnover instead in the midfield. Centre wing. See if Arella's dropped down. He's got it. So the Green Ants just keeping the pressure on. The kick's right across the face. The big man, Winter Irving, he's got a runner and it's McMahon again. Left foot kick wasn't great in the way it looked. Silver Yusuf got one hand on it, couldn't quite get it cleanly. Robinson just shows it back to Aaron Stokes. Aaron Stokes comes to Jared Stokes. Couldn't get it first time, got it second time. Handball away. Bodies in there at the moment. Kicked off the ground. Darwin just going to try and settle it down. It's going to go out of bounds. Well, this is danger again for the Darwin Buffaloes just before the break. We've gone 24 and a half minutes here. Comes back in board and it's the big man, Winter Irving. Looked like he got hands on it. Comes to Dylan Flanagan, right foot snap at goal. Punch through for a point. He did look like he had a fair bit of that, but uh, a bike will play on. Pint only scored one goal in this quarter and it was right in the first minute of the quarter. Looked like they had an opportunity there to get one towards the end, and there it is, the end of the quarter. We knew it wasn't far away. The Darwin Buffalo is getting four goals at quarter to one, ending up with a 10 point lead to Pint. We'll be back with the second half very shortly. in fine form today and that's another good kick from him he's going to Shannon Shannon gets a handball off and it gets it back a little one two now has a shot on goal beautiful oh, kick nice great running goal him it's to the lead of Evans couldn't mark it Sit up. Hooper he gets to a few, gets a handball out as he's tackled. Handball will come back. Wilson snaps on goal. Oh, beats the fingertips of the defender and goes through. What a goal that was from Sean Wilson from full forward. Dunstan too busy deliberating with the umpire. He goes to full forward now. He had two to beat. Smith roving. What can he do? He's taken down, got a handball out. Oh. And goal from Southern Districts. Just lurking at full forward there. Sam McManus, he gets his first of the afternoon. He's unlucky there, Fee Joe. Just found himself in the wrong position with the ball at the wrong time. Good kick from Wilson. It's gone long. It goes out the back. Can he get a boot to ball? He can. Oh. Instant reply from Nightcliffe again. So they extend the lead again out to 10 points. Top. I think that was Hammond. He got a handball back in board. Now running through his Politis. Politis runs onto it in space. He's being hunted down. Kicks it inside 50. Ball bounces over the back. Tigers oh. run into open goal. And is that... Shawnee Wilson. Shawnee Wilson, he's kicked his second for the yeah. day. He can't take it. He kicks it to Brody Philo. He couldn't take the mark, but he rolls around. Almost held without it. Plays for it. Umpire takes it. Pays advantage. And that's a goal to Nightcliff. They're really putting a bit of a buffer on. It's gone to Ryan Moo. Uh, sorry, not Ryan Moo. That's uh, Daniel Quinn. Daniel Quinn. Four to Nightcliff's five goals eight it's a 28 point um i guess extension or addition to the margin it's another shot on goal from that tight pocket i think it's mentha he'll play on and snap a few more words of encouragement from the crowd that one another behind or is it a goal no, they worked that time it's a goal so maybe that's the trick go the snap from that angle
to Mitchell, who uh, spilt the mark but had time to recover. Kicks inside 50. Oh, it gets past everyone there. Stafford just waiting at the back, falls into his lap, runs around, kicks it on the outside of the boot this time. And he's got his third grey out of the uh, three goals that Buffaloes have kicked. Orlando Turner, but uh, not much closer to goal, and they're still a couple of kicks away as Turner goes long inside 50 now. Big leap, but uh, Eddie Betts at the back of the pack. So he's only about 20 metres out. No problem whatsoever, straight through the middle. So Eddie's on the board for the first time tonight, and uh, a much-needed goal by Palmerston as we approach quarter time, Gray. And... Uh, Buffaloes tidy up at the back and bring it out to the near side, but there's plenty of Palmerston jumpers out here as Big Patterson presents himself and takes that intercept mark in front of Bolch. I think he's the key to Palmerston making a real impression. Kicks uh, going all the way to the line goal. and uh, just gets over. That's a great goal. And, and uh, on the left, hooks it in towards the goal square. Oh, Patterson dropped what he should have taken. The hand pass comes out to Jared Stokes. He floats it up. It's uh, not going to score, I don't think. A bulge comes in over the top, claims the mark, and it's been paid. Well, I'll show that, Davies, <laughs> that I can play. A very good mark. So uh, kicks on the way, no problem at all. And uh, Darwin Buffaloes with the first goal of the quarter. Across the back there, Hank gets the hand pass forward, but uh, another headband there. Pendlebury, his numbers change for those uh, viewing on the screen. But uh, the hat ball comes out to Josiah Farrah here. He has a shot for goal. It's going all the way. I think he's floated it through. He has just had enough on it. Pretty that up. The big kick comes back in and uh, Mark's built back yes. here. And Oh, yes. He's a, a kick into the goal square. Bolch is there again, and he's got two for the quarter. So just a bit untidy by Palmerston down there. Got them, ran themselves into trouble, and uh, Darwin pounced. And uh, Thomas Bolch got on the end of it for his second goal for the quarter. He's had a couple of bounces now, a third bounce. All the way around that outer side, works down to half forward, gets a kick inside forward, 50 now, and uh, out on the lead was Betts, and uh, the umpires had judged that he was being held in the marking contest. At Carlton and Adelaide, so. Probably practice it a bit more than plenty of the others, and uh, no yeah. problem whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, Eddie gets himself on the board for his second goal, and uh, Stafford dropped the mark out there, but Bowles, his uh, teammate, swoops on it and now kicks long. Down inside forward 50. Bolch in the marking contest. The ball's punched forward. Jared Stokes swoops on it now. Kicks towards goal. And uh, he's a beautiful finisher. And uh, Jared Stokes. He didn't have the Lot of mates. Tom Gaydon for point gets it across, dropped what he should have taken, picked up and a tackle taken. Play on called the umpire correctly, so it wouldn't have been taken much longer because he was tackled. Picked up, I reckon that was Tottenham. Kicks it inside forward, to, and there's the first goal. And the first goal he scored three minutes 33 seconds into the second term. Shane Thorne getting the goal, the first one it was the first one there. Braden McLean. Point. Working hard inside forward 50. Here's their big chance off the side of the boot, and they've got it. They've yep. finally got a goal, and that was uh, Silver Yusuf. A goal to point, and that uh, puts them back in the game. Not noted goal kicker. 55 metres from goal, man on the mark, will have to kick from about 60, gives it plenty, makes the square, Simpson down there, ball on the ground, you. kicked off the ground, and well done. That was a Brody Newman. We normally see him at centre half back. He's actually kicked a goal off the ground. That was a gift.
Trouble for Wanderers. McLean. Here's the call. Does it nicely. Oh. Handballs to Penrith. Penrith. Penrith kicks the goal. That was just a comedy of errors by the defence of Wanderers. And uh, Ethan Penrith has kicked a goal. Toss it up. Jones grabs the ball out of the ruck. Simpson finishes up with it. Loses possession. Running around onto the right boot. And the goal. Did you pick that player up? Only as far as a point defender, and that's Henry Tregowth. Tregowth goes inside 50, can't take the mark, ball on the ground, in dispute, Silver Yusuf kicks goal. goal. That is the nail in the coffin, Silver Yusuf. It's his second goal. We thought he'd gotten another one earlier on, but it was touched off the boot. But he's now got two goals for the game. Because uh, Saint, uh, Point just move around and use handball very, very well. D'Souza, been a good player, but missed the mark. Ball on the ground, in dispute, picked up point, kick on goal. Jones has got another one for the team. Andrew Jones, he becomes a multiple goal scorer. Really good umpiring again. We've praised the umpires, and that was another oh, good, good one. Smother. But kicked into the into the man on the mark, which is an absolute sin. Smith goes forward, gets it out in the Penrith direction. Penrith runs his full measure, gets steadies, kicks on goal, and nails it. Yep. Been a good player for him tonight, Penrith. They've given him so much room. He's got three goals now. Far out to score. Nice kick. Got to have one, someone to take a mark. Simpson can't get. Cabillo front and square. And goal. he gets the goal. That's Keelan Fijo. Keelan Fijo has a goal. Well done to him.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, the AFLNT's coverage of the 2022-23 TAO NTFL season here from TAO Stadium in Darwin, Marrakech country. We have a round 15 action, men's Premier League um, game, of course, a pint taking on um, Darwin Buffaloes. <laughs> Rob Screech looking yeah, at then uh, a, a nine-point lead at the moment to uh, the pint. A big quarter there, though, the last quarter from the Buffaloes. Four goals to one, and the only goal Pint got in that quarter was within about the first 30 seconds. So a big comeback for the Buffs. My, my name's Nick Danks. Ashley Manakaros is with me. And Ash, what do you think? Well, I... The Darwin Buffaloes had to reset in that uh, after that first quarter. They didn't score a goal in that first quarter, as Nick said, and then, and uh, uh, Pines had put four on the board. Cameron Stokes would have been waiting for that quarter to end so he could have a chat and then reset, and he did that. And uh, Darwin came out, and after the first 90 seconds, really tried to dominate that quarter, and they they had far more contributors. <coughs> Liam Holtz-Pitts came into the game, and he's kicked a couple, a couple of good ones, and uh, then uh, Joey Collinson chimed in. And as did um, uh, Cock and Nicky. And that, I think, set it up. But it was the work of the midfielders, Ryan Pendlebury, uh, Jared Stokes, Favoretto, that, uh, and the defensive line as well, that really stepped up. So I guess this second half now sets the stage. And, and perhaps, Nick, if you could just go through for those that have just joined us in this second half, what this game means from a point standing point of view. Absolutely. There's only three rounds to go after this one. Buffs need to win this one and lock themselves in a nice, secure place in the five. It'll lock them away with 30 points and night different playing later tonight on 24. So it will really lock the Buffs away for a chance of the finals. There's only two games left of the season for Pint. They're currently sitting on 20 points just outside the five. But the two games they've got remaining is Southern Districts, who, of course, ladder leaders had had a massive 89-point win today over the Tiwi Bombers, and the Nightcliff Tigers, who are four points ahead of them in the ladder. So either way, Pint need this one, if you would think, to do. They've got uh, Southern Districts and, as I said, the Tigers, and Nightcliff also had um, the Tiwi Bombers as their final game of the season. So that's uh, a pretty handy one to finish off the season, go into the finals, and uh, Pint have a bye in the final round of the season. So, uh, they, as I said, they probably want to hold on this one. The one thing that Pine have been good at, and I've seen them seven or eight times this season, I've seen them, they've been really, really good in the third quarter. And I don't think I've seen them lose the third quarter, even in the first game, where they played the Tigers in a horrible wet night. They even came back and won that quarter. So this will be very interesting to see how uh, Bondroff gets them out of here. Yeah, well, we saw them against, uh, you and I commentated when they played against Waratahs at DXC Arena, and they were 40 points down at halftime. Yep. Ended up only losing that game by 10 and, and got back to within a kick of that third quarter. So anything can happen. There's still a long way to go in this game. And uh, the umpires are now just going out into position, as are the players. The conditions here, um, we had a little bit of drizzle just before half time, which made the ball that much slipperier. We've had rainfall here this afternoon at TIO Stadium, so the ground itself is a little bit waterlogged. But that doesn't seem to have bothered the big boys of pints like uh, Kyle Winter Irving or Brock Carter. They've been taking everything above their heads. Yeah, absolutely. We've had, as I said, a bit of rain around, a few drizzles a few moments ago. Pretty clearing up, though. The next bout of rain coming through is a couple of hours away, so hopefully we can get out of this game. The previous game ended after the third quarter, as I said, with a big win to Southern Districts. Only the two-week bombers by 89 points because of lightning around the ground. And we started this one here about 10 minutes late as well. But we're here for round 15 action of the Men's Premier League. Darwin Buffalo's taking on Point, and Point currently leading by nine points as we're about to start the third quarter. Brock Carter, the NT representative Ruckman, is up against Christopher Atkinson. Be an interesting duel between those two tonight. Whoever wins it out of the midfield, I notice that Ethan Penrith has gone in there for pints number 42. Standing Jared Stokes. Penrith was very busy in that first half. Carter wins out, tap down, free kick's been found straight away in a hole. And it's going to go, I would suspect, to Pint. And it is. So they immediately can go into attack in this, at the start of this quarter. Yusuf uses his body to run onto it. Then from the right foot, looking for Kyle Winter Irving. The big man juggles it, can't get it. Coming through was Timmy Eldridge, couldn't pick it up cleanly. Maroney can't get it. Jet Trotter's worried off it. Picked up by Alex Harvey. Right foot, left foot snap it. Goal is all clear. So very similar to the start of the second quarter. A very early goal to point. Um, Yusuf needs to get himself back into this game as well. It was pretty quiet there, but he got right in that one. So that's exactly what Point needed to start this half. As we just watch it here, Trotter comes in. It's knocked away from him. Picked up, though, by 
Alex Harvey left foot just guides it over and that is Harvey's third goal. Nice stat there for his third goal for Harvey. Um, only other multiple scorer on the ground is Liam Holtz. Fits for Buff. He's got a couple. So it's uh, having a great game, Harvey. And their forward line did have a great first first quarter. Let's hope that they can get back some form back here in this third quarter. No breeze, though. Today, the flags haven't moved an inch. No, 15 points, the difference here. So the opening minute. Carter wins out. Shot. Right foot. There's the goal scorer, Harvey, again, put under pressure from Aaron Stokes. Armand Watkins bends over to try and pick it up. Can't quite get it. And everyone gets up. Penrith was the one, one of the last ones up there, number 42 for Pines. Atkinson will go up in the ruck on his own. Pendlebury gives it straight back to his uh, teammate there in Favoretto. Influential in the second quarter was Favoretto. Stafford, clever, just tipped it away. Then steps onto his right, 50 out. He's looking to guide it through from that far out. Is it going to bounce through? I reckon the all-clear is going to be given, and it is. Well, we'll see who's going to claim the goal. Holt Fitz is getting the high fives. Stafford would be feeling confident that it had to him. Well, watch this replay. Stafford was just clever. He balked. Drives it all the way in. Holtz Fitz is on his bike there. Oh, it was Holtz Fitz, and then yep. he hit the point post. Hit the goal post. How good was that? So Holtz Fitz gets his third. Just making sure that was going to go in. Probably would have bounced all the way through anyway, but he wanted to make sure of it and uh, finish it off pretty well. But uh, be careful the point post going in like that. Yeah, and uh, we'll put that down as a contender for the goal of the year as well. So as they did in the second quarter, Darwin Buff's quick reply for an early goal from Pint. Oh, Carter just got up really high and then smashes it onto the running Ethan Penrith from 50 out. His kick is offline. It's going to be marked by Robinson. No Mitch Robinson tonight. This is William Robinson. Mitch Robinson just got a bit of an upset hammy. Didn't lower his eyes then when he went brave, no. please. And so he had opportunities of guys open for him, didn't take it. No, but he's found Pendlebury. Pendlebury is going in short, sliding. Bradley Stokes. No, in fact, Stafford's come all the way down. It's gone across to Thomas Clark. Clark was very good in the first half of the Darwin Buffaloes. Clark's kick not that good this time, and Alex Harvey will mark it. Harvey. Oh, his kick is cut off by Jared Stokes. Danger time. Doyle, handball back, comes to McMahon. Quick hands here. They're under pressure. Good body there from the Darwin Buffalo's players. Stokes, high on. Vantage is paid. Collinson with a left foot kick. Nicky's there. Holt fits, though. Just dropping back. And Holtz fits read it beautifully out of the air and marked it on his chest. Go around the corner kicking for his fourth. Holtz fits, kick around the corner, right hand, makes no mistakes this time. And he gets his fourth. And they claw it back, and there's only, what, three points in it? Yeah, he had that opportunity right at the start of the game for that same, exactly the same snap, but he took it a bit too sharp and too soon and hit the point post. But that one there, he's learned from his mistake, put it straight over the goal umpire's head. Did they put pressure on him? Collinson, and then good body here. Hold Spitz just read it. All right, suddenly we've got ourselves a three-point ball game. We haven't even gone five minutes yet in this third term. Premiership quarter, as they always say. Don Buffalo's edging ever so closer back. With far fewer scoring opportunities. Carter just wins, wins out. Uncontested on Mitchell just gives Sells the biggest dummy and sends it straight into the full forward area. Punched away by Jared Stokes. Got one hand on it. Comes back out to Sterling Mitchell. He just keeps pressuring on. Keeps the pressure on Doyle from Pints. Stafford sliding hands and knees. Can't get it out. Collinson. Mullane comes in there. Bolch is in there as well. Also Chalmers. Bolch has ended up on the ground on the bottom of Chalmers. And Ryan. Andy Ryan. Jared Stokes having a great game in the centre of the park today. He's done a fair bit of good stuff at the Buffs and kept him right in this. Walsh, quick kick. Oh, come back in. They just keep trying to burrow it forward. Coulthard just got picked up. 
came to the ground. Well, they need to get this ball up and going. Penrith just using his body. Big hands from Carter to Trotter. Slung off the ball, let go. Clark couldn't get it the first time. Burnett keeps the pressure on. So too does the sliding Ryan. Socket off the ground, still no clearance. Bulge. No one's got clean hands. Comes to Stokes with pace. Stokes from 35 out. Just goes off to the right of the goalpost. Through for a point. Mitchell Lowe plays on quickly. Put under pressure. Finds Mullane. So Ashley Mullane. He's got a teammate out here. Gaiden. Might just have to have the slow build. And they do. Mitchell Lowe's run on to get it back. A long way from home is Mitchell Lowe, the defender. He's got Silver Yusuf, who's got a bit of space on his opponent. So he's going to go to Yusuf. It's not a great kick. He's come from behind. Free kick's been paid. Advantage is there. It's come to Alex Harvey, looking for Winder Irving. It's going to go over the top. It's a foot race. Maroney's there, and he just guides it out over the boundary line and will be thrown in. Good build up then from Pints. Absolutely. Just did, couldn't get that last one through, the kick over the top. Tell you what, if he goes over the top towards the goal, there's a chance of bouncing through. There was no one in that square. And no one running onto it. Carter takes spot, comes out, couldn't quite get it. Snap over that right sh left shoulder, curling it all the way around, bounces and hit the post. And if just a consultation. Chalmers was the one that actually got the kick away, I think. We'll just see if that's the... Chalmers got the kick away. Let's see what happens here. Well, I don't know what the Darwin players are appealing. I think it was a point, or is it a... Yeah, it was a point. point yeah. All clear, hit the post. They had a bit of a chat there whether it was a push out off the ball, but he was a dip, dip, not play go backwards. He didn't... Right. Was, was looking at that, looking yeah. at that replay, there was... There was, there was, con there was hardly any contact. The box player was jumping as they... Bring it back in. Timmy Eldridge there gets it. And Irving's going to stand the mark. Yeah. Matt Ryan. Takes that easily. Now he plays on. Looking for the big man. Winter Irving. Robinson. Alex Harvey was at the front. Read it lovely from that right-hand pocket. Gosh, that was close. Was what? How good was that? Let's have a look at this on replay. Harvey, inside out. Tell you what, that was very close. <laughs> Goal up is a lot closer than you and I are, but geez, he looked close. Four points the difference here at TIO. Nine and a half minutes gone. Robinson. That's William Robinson. His kick is going to be intercepted by Smith. Ethan Smith just goes over the top. Tyler Flanagan couldn't get it cleanly. They're going to run away with it, though. Again, Kyle Winter Irving. The bigger body, hurried handball. Let go. Play on is the call. Timmy Eldridge comes in to pick it up. Out to Pendlebury. Clark beats one, then gets away from a second one to get a kick away, and he does. Oh, Coulthard had a look. Touched off the boot. Coming through was uh, Penrith. Jared Stokes has got it though. Back to Coulthard. Over the shoulder. Doyle was diving back. Couldn't quite get it. Stafford. Stafford with a handball over the top. Clock and Nicky has got there. Beats one. Then he goes back in board. Collinson had a look before he got rid of it. Then back to Nicky. To Stokes. Pints defence really working overtime. Pushing the ball out. Oh, taken high there I thought was... Uh, uh, Seaton Kernoff, still loose. Play on is the call. There's a hold off the ball. It's going to go to Darwin. And I reckon it was Bradley Stokes. It's, no, it's Armand Watkins that will get it. 
Thought Seaton Kernoth was a bit unlucky there as Armat Watkins sends it in, looking for Holt Fitz. He gets hands on it, comes over the back to Ash Mullane, though. So Mullane on to Ryan. The Pints defence working overtime at the moment, but they've come up trumps to get it to to get it to the centre wing. Gee, that was a yeah. tight passage of uh, tight passage of football there, Nick. Yeah, Mullane and uh, Stokes. Uh, Mullane was really well there today in the back line, and he was certainly a settler there for them. But uh, I'd like to see that other one again in replay. Atkinson, Pendlebury. Now it's on to Bulge. Oh, underground kick wasn't great. McBean couldn't get it the first time. Clark got it wrapped up. Out it comes back again. Picked up, though, by the ruck in Atkinson. Atkinson just sends it into the middle corridor. Worried there is uh, Nicky putting some pressure on. Liam holds fits. Shows a little bit of dash. Tried to go underground. Couldn't do it. Pints will settle it down. But Pendlebury's there for Darwin. He's got a target. Target was Armat Watkinson. Uh, Armat Watkins. Now everyone stacks on it. Bolts not 15. Play on is the call. Getting physical out there. The fans come to see Tyler Flanagan wrapped it up and then he got wrapped up. The guys come in to throw this one up. Nearly 12 and a half minutes gone. Just four points the difference. 6 6. Darwin Trail 6 10. Uh, Darwin Trail Pine 6 10. It's scrambly. And that's more to do with the intensity. Ryan Pendlebury's kick. Just overrunning it. Clark hurried Hamble back out to Pendlebury. Oh, good physical contest there. Flanagan again. Here they come. Pints. Can they settle it? Inside the 50. Doyle's gone up front trying to make a difference. Robinson is there reading it off hands of the front. Atkinson with a handball. <laughs> Looked more like a volleyball punch. Eldridge ducked his head. Play on was the call. Doyle trying to put him under pressure. Yusuf comes in. Atkinson with a spin. Loose off hands. Socket off the ground by Harvey. Winter Irving takes the mark. He's got to run at Alex Harvey if he can get to him quick enough. He slows down. Yusuf's not looking. Yusuf was out there. He could keep going. Trotter's there. Coming through again is Harvey. They get out of trouble to the Darwin Buffaloes. Bolt sliding. Takes a mark. Settles it down. Goes to Atkinson. He can give it off again. Stafford gives his opponent a little bit of a nudge. Penrith reaches in, gets it. Handball, Carter. Gaiden. Gaiden across to Mitchell Lowe. Mullane, bouncing ball, Sterling Mitchell. Oh, he was met heavily by his opponent. Burnett. Trotter, he's come a long way up from half back, half forward. Trotter again. They can run it out wide, comes to McMahon. McMahon this time goes in board to Taylor, hit the ground. And umpire Noonan says, give it to me, no prior opportunity. Edith Pender, a little bit slow to get up there, but he's back up and running now. They bring it out. McMahon. And he's been pinged for a throw. Hard to handball with one hand held. Gee, the intensity it's been good. has really lifted both sides. Both sides sensing that there's a bit at stake here. And not just reputation, it's actually about premiership points. William Robinson. Looking up board off, great grab there, and that's Penrith. He has been one of Pint's best tonight. He goes in board. Nicky, though, got a fingertip on it, which disrupted its flight. Sterling Mitchell gets it. Handball back to Stokes. Back to Nicky. Another one having a good game tonight, Nicky is. Yeah, Nicky. Just picks out his teammate. Favretto on the lead. Holtz Fitz was there, so was Bolch, but it's going to come back out. Mitchell comes in to give hands. And Pints are going to kick it. Out of trouble, Pendlebury versus Doyle, one out by Pendlebury. Maroney's in there, he dances one way, then back the other. On to Aaron Stokes. 
Stokes, quick pass. Interrupted though. Coulthard couldn't quite get a fingertip on it. Jared Stokes is in there. It's good body all round. I've got to tell you, they'd probably be happy the ball's gone out of bounds there. They can have a breather for a minute or two. 16-minute mark of the third quarter. Points leading by four points. It's been a tight contest tonight. Oh, they both just fall over the Ruckman. Holtz fits. He's too far from goal with a snap like that, but he just sends it forward. But coming through there was Kyle McBean. Underrated so far. McBean just turns and goes looking for Stafford. Stafford got two or three bites and it couldn't bring it down, though. Pints are going to get out of trouble again. They can get out through Matty Ryan on the wing. He's got two to beat. Ryan's just going to put it on the boot. Silver Yusuf's a long way behind from Eldridge. Eldridge couldn't get it cleanly. Stokes. Stokes taps it out. They just put it on the boot again. Pints have an opportunity here to get it inside the 50. Irving. So Winter Irving can go over the top, and he does. And who's he picked out there? Just wait for him to get around. He's picked out Matty Ryan. Well, Matty Ryan has been a driving force. He did a lot of work in that first yep. half, but uh, they seem to have unleashed him in this second half, in this third quarter, because he's done a lot of work across that midfield. So all the players are letting him go. Pints are setting themselves up in case he misses. As Matty Ryan comes in, and he doesn't let him down. Puts it through. And neither that one, the settler, they did. The uh, Brock Carter's come down as well, and that tackle he did earlier on where he, the two ruckmen fell down together, it's rolled over onto his left ankle. He's just walking it off now, but he's sitting on the sideline. They were working on a few minutes there, but uh, he does look like he's in a fair bit of pain. Well, I don't think they can uh, avoid, I don't think they can afford to have him off if uh, for too much. I mean, obviously, they don't want to do any damage to him, but, I mean, Tyler Flanagan has definitely proven himself tonight, so there's no... Major issue there. And he's up and walking around, so hopefully he's just walking off a rolled ankle, but he certainly went down and didn't get up very quickly. Oh well, as the Black Knight would say, just walk it off, it's a flesh wound. <laughs> Flanagan versus Atkinson. Tyler. A one out by Atkinson. It's one of the reasons why they can't be without Brock Carter. Jet Trotter has gone into the middle. They get a kick away. Two pints. Silver Yusuf. Eldridge is equal to it, though, and the bouncing ball, and he's going to steady it. He's going to... The kick, though, was off the boot. Well, this is danger territory for the Darwin defence. Under pressure, Stokes. Bradley Stokes, handball away. Silver use of lifted a gear. Second effort, high tackle, though. The high tackle was on Seedon Kernoff, and he'll get a free kick. The second effort of Pints forwards... Yeah, he missed kicked that one coming into it, and, but Pint kept him there. But they've been both sides have been doing that tonight, locking it very much in their forward 50, and uh, just waiting to see which one can take the advantage. We had a couple of those tonight. Ten points the difference. Seaton Kernoff with a bomb. Oh, it's gone out the back. It's going to be marked. Pints bring it back in board. It's in the hands of Thomas Shot. Shot on the lead. Matty Ryan was there and he's grabbed it, but he had two to choose from. He could yep. go to Matty Ryan or he could go to Kyle Winter Irving. He looks like he's going to come off for a break, but Matty Ryan's already kicked one from a very, from a far harder angle than this one that he's going to have a shot now. Yeah, Matty Ryan's got, had some great hands tonight. Took a great mark just in front of the grandstand here earlier on. The one out there now and then this one, of course, lining it up for a bit of a settler for Pint. Well, 10 points is the margin at the moment, and we've just gone into time on. And you can make that oh, margin yeah. 16 points. Didn't move, did he, the goal umpire? No. You can make that margin 16 points as Matty Ryan gets his second this quarter, and he's second for the game. Well, it's a real arm wrestle here, Nick. I'm... Uh, I'm wondering if we are seeing pints who are true to form in this third in the third quarters yep. that we've seen. 
three goals to two this quarter and they've always looked good they had that little bit there in the middle where they went a bit quiet but they've uh, certainly come back in the last couple of minutes with a couple of goals to Manny Ryan just looking to see what's happening with Brock Carter can't see anything on that bench but no, Flanagan been... has assumed the duties anyway yeah he's middle. back up he's back up they may be just waiting now to give that a few more minutes to let us get into the final quarter and get him back out there yeah he's, no point yeah he's standing on his he's standing up though before he was laying on the ground and they were working on his left ankle infringement against Darwin there they didn't have the proper 666 so uh, that's the first warning to the Darwin club second one it'll be a free kick Atkinson versus Flanagan one out by Atkinson again Although it'll be Pine Saddle Shark it. Thomas Clark with a sock, socket kick off the ground. McBean can't get it either for Darwin. McMahon. His opponent sliding with Stephen Kernoff. Just trying to keep it out of that 50. Asking the question there. Because I think I'm at Watkins with a grin on his face. Down Drump has been kept busy tonight. This ball has been up contested all night. Well, they paid the big bucks, apparently. Nick. Atkinson, right foot. Into the goal square, top. Well, this is danger. Nicky off the ground. He was the only one who waited back there, Nicky was. He thought this thing's going to drop over the back. It did, but it just didn't drop perfect for him. He had every opportunity. Watch in replay. He pulled right out of the contest there, thinking, I know where this is going to go. And he just waited for it to fall and just couldn't get the crummy. No, it bounced off Mullane's chest, but um, sort of Atkinson's kick was a bit of a nothing kick. Just up and a little bit of hope. Yeah. Picked out there. See Varela. Oh, sorry, Ben Smythe. They picked out Smythe. So Smythe can go. Hands out the back. Oh, danger. That's Tanner Coulthard, quick kick. Kaylin Russell. Alex Harvey. He's been dangerous all quarter. He's got three. Doyle just bounces off his chest. Moroni. Oh, this is overrunning it there. All numbers. Was uh, Ryan. Ryan, though, with a left foot snap is all clear. Three in a row for Ryan, and that's given them a... A big lead now going into three-quarter time. Well, 21 so, points, the difference. Just was. watch this. Ryan overruns it once, puts the pressure on. Doyle comes in and manages to get a hand on it. And Ryan, left foot snap, Winter Irving. Good settler there for Pint. They were up by 27 points at the start of the end of the first quarter. 10 points at half time. And here we are now, 21 point lead to Pint. They needed this, that goal in. And certainly the last five or 10 minutes, Matty Ryan has been in a red hot streak of three, three goals in a row. Yeah. So we now see that uh, Darwin has again messed this up. So it'll be Pints again. They got a warning at the last restart. Yep. Now it'll go to Flanagan. Oh, here's another danger. Comes in the hands of Trotter. Trotter from 50, directly in front. It's going to flow through. Oh, touched oh, on the touched. line. That, that could have turned at that one. That what a kiss of death that yeah, was. Absolutely. Looked like it was through. Keith Pratt, 500, 500 games knows better than me. Comes to the hand of Coulthard through Robinson. Sliding mark there. It's Fabretto. It's a Fabretto. His kick. Yeah, there's a marking infringement there. Collinson interfered with his opponent. It's Trigger, Triggerworth. Oh, McMahon and, and yep. shot. Now they can run away. Mitchell Lowe's come all the way down. Silver Yusuf got a bit of a nudge in the air. Play on is the call. Triggerworth is there. Handball over the top. Yusuf. Timmy Eldridge will clean up for Darwin. His kick, though, oh, comes to Mitchell Lowe. Another long quarter pushing in at 25 minutes. And there's been a few goals. I mean, I'm counting four. I'm counting uh, six goals. Is this, this is, as I said, they, the siren sounds to end the third term. So that's it here for the end of the third quarter. We'll come back to you shortly here at TIO Stadium for the round 15 action. Darwin Buffaloes taking on point.
goes for home and it's nailed an absolute rip sorter. From the pocket and he's kicked an absolute ripper.
Welcome back here to the final quarter from TIA Stadium, round 15. Men's Premier League, Darwin Buffalo's taking on point. We're underway. Yeah, straight away, and it was good to see Brock Carter. And he might be looking a little, running a little bit gingerly against Sterling Mitchell. Stafford, though, trying to soccer it off the ground. As uh, Stafford eventually gets it out, but Pines through McMahon will run it out through center, on center wing. Alex Harvey comes all the way down. Already kicked three goals tonight as Alex Harvey. Pints with the work, sorry, Darwin with the work to do. 22 points the margin. Jared Stokes, the skipper for Darwin. Sends it into full forward looking for Holt Fitz, but it's going to go over his head. And the ball will be marked. And they will steadier and bring it back out. Not a great kick. Didn't have to be. It's gone out of bounds. Four goals to two in that quarter in favour of Pints. Got it back into it. They were, came, came to the half time with a 10 point lead. Went in the three quarter time, 22 points up. And they managed to kick the first goal at the start of each quarter. So uh, they won't, Buffs won't want this to happen, this one. No, Stafford versus Carter. Braden Taylor there with a handball over the top. Mitchell low, hurried kick. It's going to go up high. It'll stay in board just. Sterling Mitchell came over the top, copped his opponent high, let go, play on is the call, Ryle Pendlebury, Ryan Pendlebury is there, he's had a good game tonight, picking out Holtz Fitz, good delivery, Liam Holtz Fitz doesn't let him down, and he's already scored four tonight, taken ev not every opportunity, he's taken most of his opportunities, he's only missed one really, that he probably should have yeah. got. Yeah, that was right at the start of the game, but he went around the angle and hit the post. Yeah. But apart from that, he's taken every opportunity. But that one there, I think he was trying to lay the ball off, but the other player wasn't looking. No, he should have probably just backed himself and gone to have a kick. Mine's just uh, prepared to pass it around and bring it out strategically. Looking for the big man, Carter, off his hands. Handball over the top, Favoretto gets, gets it uh, chopped off. Quick hands, but it's going to be Ryan Pendlebury that will actually settle it down. Now there's a contest in the middle. Silver Yusuf's there, he gets stripped of the ball. McMahon come, came in, he got wrapped up. And uh, the umpire will have to restart play. Now it's kicked out. And coming across is Armat Watkins. He can bring it out to the grandstand side. He doesn't, though. He goes across to Tanner Coulthard on that far wing. Coulthard's kick from Bowles. Bowles is quickly. And his kick, well, at the moment, is just half back to half back. And no one's taking the opportunity to lower their eyes and just. Uh... Worked this through, Piner chipped away at it, but they're not getting past the halfway at the moment. No, Gaiden picked out McMahon, he's gone in yeah. board, and Sterling Mitchell is there. He's been very good for Darwin. He gets knocked off the ball by Penrith and has been pinned for holding the ball. And Ethan Penrith can restart, goes to Braden Taylor. So Taylor, sideways, he's got Thomas Shot. And then we'll run on and try and get it back. It's going to be a bouncing ball, not a great kick. Well, Braden Taylor's come in, hit heavily. Sliding, falling over. Comes to Mullane. Mullane tries to beach one. Looked like a throw from here, let go. Tanner Coulthard gets burrowed over the boundary line. Interesting handball from Mullane. A couple of point players, not surprised at this time of the game, with their hands on hips at the moment, but uh, they have been a very fit side this season, so they will get a second breeze come through. 22 points the difference. Four minute mark. Carter over the back. Yusuf just waits. Here they go again, down with a build up. Comes to Timmy Eldridge. On the, tar on the lead was Holtz Fitz. Got a couple of hands on it, had a couple of goes, couldn't get it, then tried to get it on the rebound. Dragged off was Nicky, smothered off the boot from Brock Carter. Ethan Smith burrowed up. Now it comes to Bowles. Bowles with a hurried kick and uh, taking it in defence there will be Gaiden ahead of Bolch. Bolch just gave Gaiden a metre. Not a great kick though, Nicky can get it. Doesn't worry about trying to pick it up. Now it comes to Silver Yusuf. Yusuf, if he just lowers his eyes and he does, look to give it back. 
to his uh, to his teammate in Chalmers. Chalmers goes sideways to Braden Taylor. They've got plenty of space, and a 50 metre penalty has actually been paid. And I'm not quite sure what that was. Doesn't matter. It sets up good field position. It's actually going to go all the way back to Elliot Chalmers. So something happened off the ball. Didn't see it. And Chalmers, and as a consequence of that, Chalmers is going to get a shot at goal, you would think. The umpires are in asking for everyone to be clear as Chalmers will come in directly in front and will kick from 45 metres out. I think he's just sprayed that off a little bit to the right. It's going to fall short anyway. Touched, touched on the line. Through for a point. 23 points we're out to. Yep. That must have been something off the ball because, of course, it wasn't involved in the play and the umpires paid that at plus 50, so something must have happened, obviously, off the ball. Stokes to Robinson. Mitch Robinson with a bit of a hamstring injury after the rep game. Pendlebury there is the one with it now. This is William Robinson has come into the side. Jared Stokes, bouncing ball, gets it. He's got time to clean up, though. He's going to have to go back to Pendlebury. Pendlebury then picks out Coulthard. Pendlebury has been probably Darwin's best player tonight. Certainly has. I've got him on the list. Then I'm just going through because I'm looking at some names, and he's certainly on that list. Over the back and through for and out of bounds. So... Darwin would want to score next, I would think, and they probably want to score from this next forward, from this forward movement, if they can generate something from the boundary throw-in. It's come to Taylor, Braden Taylor. He's been one of Pine's better players tonight. Bowles, handball over the top, Coulthard. Long kick forward. Bolch got a chest on it. Russell couldn't get control. Neither could Bolch. So, whilst it might not be pretty, Darwin has managed to move it around that far side. Only about 70 metres around from their goal. Edging it ever so closer. Atkinson's taken front position, which is handy. Handball. Can they get it away? Penrith has gone back. Uh, Matt Watkins gets a handball up in the air, but there's a few Pines players there to get, out, get them out of trouble. Handball was a bit sloppy, but tight. There's some tired bodies out there. It's gone sideways to McMahon. McMahon's got a runner over the top. The runner is Ciavarelli. Ciavarelli for Doyle. Doyle got taken out in the contest. Moroni just got one hand on his right shoulder and dragged him down. Doyle got first hands on it. Well, he's just had a sight of before, so here he goes now. Let's see if he can get this one to clear the line. He's a little bit closer. Uh, a little bit more of an angle to the to the right hand side, but uh, he certainly have only had a shot a few minutes ago to get his eyesight in line. Well, the thing about Doyle is he spent the first half up back, and he probably just kicks like a backman. Yep. Not that I know what a backman <laughs> generally kicks like, but I think he also stabbed at that, which didn't help. 24 point lead. Still. So just watch the Maroney's there, just there, just, just drags him back. He had the mark as well, I think, in the end, so he was going to get that. Jared Stokes. Can they build something from here? They try through Coulthard. Arm out Watkins. And Atkinson. Well, it was going to be one of two things as far as Atkinson was concerned. It was going to beat them all and slide down the behind. And slide down behind or someone was going to touch it and it's gone out of bounds anyway. Tyler Flanagan up against Atkinson. And two big men. One out front position by Flanagan. Coulthard, hurry kick. All right, and Mitchell Lowe. Anyone who had eyes for that ball there. Yeah, very reliable defender. And comes in, interfered there was Penrith in the marking contest by McBean. Another guy who's played well tonight, certainly in that first couple of quarters, had a, got it really set up for a point. Burnett. Burnett plays on. Kyle, but Robinson has started to come into his own against the big man. Getting a pace for the game is Walt Robinson. He goes back to Armat Watkins. Bowles. 
Patrick Bowles. He's just going to set it up. Don't know it's a great kick. Bolch is going to come back. Again, it comes out to Penrith. Penrith kick is laser-like. Great kick. Picks out shot. And Penrith is just playing one man by himself. It's a bit of a sweeper role at the moment. And he's picked off a couple in a row there for point. Favoretto just got taken high. So he's the one that's going to send him right deep into the forward area. Stafford's there. Sliding. Trying to drag it in. Not good. Smith gets dispossessed for points. Lethal. Holtz Fitz got taken high. And Johnny on the spot was Mark Noonan. And paid the free kick. So watch this. Holtz went to go. Smith stripped. Smith and Penrith just got him. Just got him. And, you know, he's had to adjust as Holtz Fitz comes all the way around. Did plays on quickly, but then it goes through for a point. Didn't come back from there. He was kicking for his fifth goal. He's had a couple of opportunities. That one there was a bit tougher than some of the other ones. But they just didn't turn back for him. 23 points have added a point extra since three-quarter tie. Pine have looking pretty comfortable, which, would, as I said before, I think Buffs would definitely need to get the next one, and very shortly. Comes out. It's trotter. In fact, it's gone out of bounds on the full, so Darwin can bring it back. Pendlebury. Right. Ryan Pendlebury. This will be a good... If they can hold on points, it'll be a good victory to them. Darwin need to score this next goal. Comes to Dylan Flanagan. Over the top. Kyle Winter Irving. He too has been one of the best. This man, Alex Harvey. He's got three on the run. He gets his kick di dispossessed by Bradley Stokes. Interfered and smothered with. Pints, though, have still got numbers. Ryan handballs back to Doyle. Doyle pushes off Maroney. Can he get rid of him a second time? He can't. It comes back to Ryan. Left-footed goal. Goal square. Silver Yusuf bounced over the back. Touched hands and threw for a point. Yusuf got up high there, but unfortunately just got a touch on it. And uh, probably took away the sealer. Yeah, it was a big effort. Not a bad... Not a bad effort there. We're back live on centre wing. Ethan Penrith just shows the ball. Gives it off to Tyler Flanagan. Flanagan over the top. Kyle Winter Irving just running into open space. Well, they were coming from everywhere there. Pint. Thomas Clark stood no chance and William Robinson was stuck between two players. He had, he had a choice. He could either go one way or the other. Winter Irving's had one of those nights tonight. You'd think he's got four or five on the board. He's showed himself up a couple of times, but he's actually kicking for his first goal. But he's had certainly been in and about all night. Yeah, he's, he's given them a target. He's presented himself very well. But he just hasn't been able to put the score on the board, although I think he might have done it that time. He has. Yes, he has. Well... So that's really going to make a difference to the ladder. The Buffs are sitting in fourth place on 26 points. Now Piner will jump up to 24 points. So more importantly, in the next game, we're going to show where the Tigers need to lead now or else they could drop out of the five. The percentage might keep, will keep them there, but uh, certainly tighten that up between Nightcliffe and Pine and put Pine right in there in their first season to be knocking on the door of the five. 30 points the difference here. There's still a lot of time left in this game of football, no question about it. Darwin, out of this ruck restart, have got to get on top in the middle. They've got given themselves every opportunity. They've got Stokes, Pendlebury and Favretto in there. Mitchell comes out wide to Coulthard, who just straight away puts it on the boot, up and under and goes into the circle. Mitchell versus Brock Carter. Held on to there was Stokes. Let go. Play on is the call. Sterling Mitchell with good body. Nicky comes down to pick it up. He's given it to the running skipper. So from 50, Jared Stokes lines up the big sticks. It's going to sway it off to the left. Bolt comes down to take a mark and is going to be awarded just inside. A metre inside. Bolt. This will be... If he can put this through, then I'd say it's game back on. As Bolt swings around onto his right, hasn't made any mistake, I don't suspect. 
all clear. Looked pretty comfortable there when he put that one through. 24 points now. We started this quarter with a 22-point lead to Pint. So they've still got that couple of points. Just tried to goal for goal there. As we watch the replay now, well run by Stokes. Out of there, he led him into the pocket. Only guy that was ever going to mark that ball. Up in a bit of a pack, but once he took it, he went away straight away. Looking very confident to get back into the middle. 50 playing 74, Pint have led all but apart from the first couple of minutes at the beginning of the game. Yeah, this is going to be, if they can maintain a little bit of momentum here, um, if they can maintain maintain a little bit of momentum here out of the middle, punched on by Brock Carter, Tanner Coulthard, got the last clearance out of there, it comes to Stokes. Stokes over the top to... Coulthard again. His kick's not great. Dives on it. This could be dangerous. It comes out to Clark. Clark being very serviceable. He doesn't worry about anything except getting it further forward. And then Gaden came through to take the mark for Pints, the green ass defender. Just asking his teammates to settle down. He can bring it across the grandstand side, but he's going to ignore that. And go back up to a cost. Big shove in the back there. Was against Pendlebury. Yeah, Carter. He wasn't arguing about it. He gave it straight back to him. No. We have a saying, an umpiring called major and obvious. That was both those things. Uh, William Robinson was good then to get front position. And a hole and a sling. And Robinson has earned himself a free kick. Bradley Stokes. Punched away, though, from Bolch. Well, all of this chews up the clock. So from yep. Green Ant's point of view, it's actually not a bad thing, Nick. Especially that one there over the fence. And that one's going to go for a climb over the fence to get it. Yeah. The water, girl, the water carrier is on her way over. One of the novelties of uh, top-end footy. Didn't go. Didn't go too far. So the, the thing being that... Uh, the thing being that... The clock doesn't stop, so with the throw in, just makes it that just touch harder every time. And there's not only a few tired bodies from the players, umpires are starting to get tired as well. Not surprisingly, everyone's done a fair bit of running tonight. It's been a very physical game. It's been a good game of footy. Yeah, it's been a good pace right from the word go. They came out running at each other, playing end-to-end -end footy. Took a while to settle down and score a goal, but once they got in target, I certainly piped it in that first quarter. Hurried out. Green Ants just want to stay, maintain their momentum. Mullane, little short kick. They're having to go back. Mitchell, Mitchell low. They could bring it inside and switch it across, but they're not going to. They're going to continue to kick down that far side wing, looking for contests. Just sock it off the ground. Mark there from Stokes, no, let go. Play on is the call. He's come back to Bradley Stokes. Over the top, then to Tanner Coulthard. Handball inside to Mitchell. Sterling Mitchell on the boot. And that mark's going to get taken, though, by Gaydon. So again, Tom Gaydon, if he looks this way, he's got McMahon clear. Instead, he goes to the big ruckman, Brock Carter, who falls over in the contest. Bit of a bouncing ball, Gaiden's going to get it there. He's got Mullane. So Mullane, sort of kick is a bit underground. You would think he was searching for that boundary line. Pendlebury keeps it in though. Can he help Coltart out? There was a free kick. It's going to go to, there's a bit of push and shove. The free kick's going to go to, and a 50 is going to be paid. So the free kick was going to go to Tanner Coltart because yep. he got legged. And then uh, while he was, while that was happening, um, Noonan watered a 50, Mark Noonan. So there's a little bit of a push and shove, just asserting some control. And so Tanner Coulthard will go back and have a shot. Coming up to time on in the final quarter, this is an all important one for the Buffs. Yeah, they need to put this through. Tanner Coulthard. Oh, he's missed everything, but it's gone out of bounds. 
And you know, 24 scoring shots, effectively to 16, uh, to uh, to 15, might actually tell the story as far as uh, the result goes tonight. As uh, it's one of the youngsters over the back there in the green and gold. Retrieving the ball. The youngster can't quite get it. Now he gives it over. They've been, they're open on this uh, grandstand side the whole time, Pine have been, and it's a hard long way across from there, but they certainly have given them this side of the ground, the buffs have. Yeah, I don't know why, but uh, Pines have sort of let that go. Again, we'll see a restart. I don't know if there's going to be a huge amount of time on. I've only got one goal, two goals recorded. So there'll only be maximum three minutes, you would think. Brock Carter, I'm just coming through as Holtz fits. Gee, he's been good tonight. Yeah, he has. He's had four, he's got four goals already. He's been trying up front. Winter Irving, he's just presented himself, but just the one for him tonight. I'll miss that completely. Seaton Kernoff bends over and picks it up, gives it off to Armat Watkins, who picks out his teammate, McBean. McBean looking for Bolch. Bolch has it punched away. Eldridge come in to help out. Still on his feet is Eldridge. Experience and pace. Picks out Nicky. Good pass from him on the run. Gotham Nicky. He's got one as well for the Darwin Buffaloes. Now he's got been called to play on. It's gone to Jared Stokes. Stokes has Holt Spitz who goes and then doubles back. Now it's on the lead looking for Stafford. So Daniel Stafford. Holt Spitz must have run about 500 metres there, run around in circles. They did not his lead any time, but he's, he's had a big game and uh, he, he was getting himself positioned, but not what he, they can actually get to. The siren sounds as Daniel Stafford will come in and line it up for the Darwin Buffaloes. The kick looks good for us from behind. Yep. All clear given, but a too little too late as Darwin get their eighth goal. But still go down to the Pints Green Ants. So it's in their 18 points, I think we're going to end up with, with a win. So they uh, won that quarter, Buffaloes did by four points, but uh, all over too little too late. A uh, big night, though, for a couple of players on the ground. Um, Liam Holtz fits for Buffalo, kicked four. All single goal scorers in Collinson, uh, Birch, uh, Nicky, and Stafford just then. For Pine, we had a couple of uh, multiple goal scorers. Matty Ryan got those three in a row in the third quarter. Alex Harvey picked up three throughout the day. Jet Trotter got one. Daniel Flanagan, um, Henry Trigreff and Carl Windrub got one there towards the end. And uh, a good game. Ash, your best on ground? Who are oh. you picking? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I don't think there were too many better than Matty Ryan. I thought that uh, his game was exceptional. He ended up with three goals as a result. Um, and then the other, the other trios, Alex Harvey, um, I thought Damien McMahon early on, and I also thought um, Ethan Penrith was very good tonight. And I can't forget Kyle Winter Irving. He um, presented himself and marked pretty much everything that came his way and very mobile for a big man. He only got rewarded with one goal. I think he had a hand in a few of the others. Yeah, he certainly set up, um, certainly uh, Alex Harvey for a few there as well. And it's the first time I've seen a side up here use a big man that well for, for a while now. So he did really well in front. And I think that um, it was, uh, I think it was even honest. I think Brock Carter might have just got ahead. But I, I want to say from the Darwin point of view, Ryan Pendlebury's probably played the best game that I've seen him play this season. I've seen a fair bit of buff this year. I was pretty impressed also with uh, Sterling Mitchell when he came into the game. And then Thomas Clark was another one that for four quarters contributed. Sterling Mitchell contributed for four quarters, as did Ryan Pendlebury. And then at different stages, William Robinson, I think, had a much better second half than he did the first. I think in that second half, he found the pace of the game. So I'm pretty sure it was his debut tonight. And, uh, and then some of the others that also stepped up when they had to um, included... Uh, Daniel Stafford, and I also thought Christopher Atkinson, you know, it's very, very difficult when you're up against a ruckman like Brock Carter. Um, and then the other player that hit that was Atkinson found himself against, of course, was Tyler Flanagan from Pines. So, I mean, it was a really intriguing ruck contest. But but the battle of the midfields, and you'd have to give it a slight advantage to Pines, but uh, I've got to say to you, percentage will separate Nycliffe and Pints now. Yep. 
And so the next game, Nycliffe Saints, is going to be a cracker because now Pints are on equal premiership points. Yep, we're going to leave you with that one. Round 15 action of the Men's Premier League competition this afternoon. Buffaloes took on the Pints. Pints getting up in the end. It's been a pleasure to host you this evening. My name's Nick Danks. I was joined by Ashley Manakaras. Thank you for joining us. And we'll be both back here at TA Stadium very shortly for the next Men's Premier League game. As mentioned, Nycliffe Tigers taking on St Mary's. Fight and win, nowhere from time.